Hello there, this is Kato1989 for the Bracecast chat about for Ruby episode, for Ru Ruby volume Kato, 1. Ruby yeah, one. I was flashing back, I was flashing back to our first reaction. <laughs> first one, Kato, we're yeah. to get us all, we're to get the ball rolling. Yeah, we're going well, to we do an episode, we're going to go through the whole series. Yeah, we d <laughs> we did do a first reaction to episode 1, so you have to forgive me for that. Oh, but yeah, joining me for for this is Sora, Noretsu, and Dominic. Yo. Oh, right. So obviously, if you if you're watching this, then you probably know what, we, what we're here for. But if you don't know what we talk about, this is of course uh, Rooster Teeth's uh, recent series Ruby, um, which just recently concluded. Like last week. Yeah, we were going to record this last week, but um, Sora was away. I had to get my Phoenix Downs out again. <laughs> <laughs> Your defib units. Yes. Defib yes. units laced with Phoenix Downs. Yeah, so basically, last week, instead of recording uh, this, me and Noretsu had a Pokemon battle. So you'll be seeing that in the bonus <laughs> that was video. The funniest shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, so, yeah, uh, we are actually going to be talking about this bit by bit. Uh, first off, we're actually going to be talking about the trailers. So we're going to be look, uh, looking back at uh, the red, white, black and yellow trailers and just remembering how we felt about the series when those when we first saw those. Um, after that we're actually going to be talking about the build-up to episode one. So this is basically every, every little bit that we might have heard, you know, a bit of hearsay here and there, uh, which might have got us a bit either excited or concerned for what we're actually about to watch. Um, then we're actually going to talk about the series itself, all its ups and downs. Um, uh, then we're going to have a quick bit about the soundtrack. Uh, then we'll have a look, a look at our, our, our favourite and least favourite characters. Uh, then we're actually going to discuss what we would change for Volume 2. Um, and then we're actually going to give our final ratings for Volume 1. Alrighty. So we've got a lot to talk about. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, uh, let's get into this, obviously. Uh, we all really started off with the red trailer. Oh god, yes. Yes, we, which obviously made its debut at the end of Red vs. Blue Season 10. Which... I will admit, I was very, I was interested, but I was also kind of confused. <laughs> I think everyone was confused because it's like, what the fuck was this? <laughs> yeah. It's like, what, what, what is this trying to be? What is this go, what are they planning? So I was... What, what, what are they doing? So, yes. It's like, it's like suddenly you see like, you know, a screen of an anime and like, what? What's going on? Yeah. Hype train has left the station, heading towards. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think really putting the red trailer at the end of Red vs. Blue 10 uh, was actually a bit of a good decision because I think if it if they had released it, yeah, if they had just instantly released it on its own, I don't think it would have gotten as much attention. Mm. Well, of course, because I don't watch Red vs. Blue because I'm a knob. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I first saw it on Crunchyroll. Because it was on their news feed. Right. And I watched it from there. And uh, let's just say the hype train started chicka 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 chicken. Because <laughs> let's face it, uh, we've, got, we've got what at the time I assumed to be Red Riding Hood with a gun scythe, sniper rifle, <laughs> killing wolves. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, I'm a little bit hyped for this. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it definitely was amazing. Um, just think, thinking back to that, it's like, how different we all thought the series was going to be from that trailer. Fucking <laughs> hell. Like, I was definitely thinking they were going to go down the whole fairy tale route, which actually would have been quite interesting, well, the, to be honest with you. You yeah, know, fairy but, tales, modern day. I mean, it's been done before, but it, oh, not yeah. in this kind it, of it gun scythe world. <laughs> it's been done before, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Yeah. 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 I it think... Was, it looked really good. I think the like, thing which... Yeah, well, I think the thing, first thing which really caught my attention about uh, the red trailer was it looked very stylized. It did, it did indeed. 
and I think I think that was something which really stuck with me, and I will say, kind of disappointed me when I finally saw the full series. <laughs> yeah, I'll get into that later, but yeah, Red Trail very stylized, and it definitely caught my attention because I love style, especially stuff like that. I don't obviously graphic. I'm not a graphics whore, but I love style. Oh yeah, and this 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 just had all the swag. Yeah. It did have all the swag, especially, especially you know that one part in that Ruby trailer where she actually just did a fake grin at the bill yeah. for slicing it in half. Yeah. That was that was that could have been great if you had added that to her character, but <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, because I I think that that bit where she just like grins and then fires the sniper and you just see that slow mo as she slices through it. I think we all had the same reaction to it. It was like whoa. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is gonna at, at first, I thought Ruby was like gonna be an anti-hero. Anti-hero. Yeah, I, I thought she was gonna be a bit badass. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. One of those silent but cocky characters. Like she's a little bit silent, shy maybe, but actually quite confident in her abilities or something. Like that's what I was getting off the trailer. Yeah, cause, I mean, that's, they did say later that they, um, when they were making the red trailer. They had no idea how Ruby was actually going to be. They hadn't really nailed... <laughs> they hadn't actually really written her character at the time they made the red trailer. So they were just doing whatever. Missed opportunity, you dipshits. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's why everybody had different ideas to what Ruby herself was going to be like in the series, in the actual and series. That's, that's the problem when you have a trailer like that that's so open. Yeah, well... Uh, because, I mean, I bet you at episode one, they lost, like, probably a quarter of the fan base right then. <laughs> like, yeah. Just... <laughs> well, it, it, it was meant to be, like, a concept trailer. It was, yeah, sure. So. You have to take it with a grain of salt, I guess, man. Yeah. Yeah. Or a grain anyway. of dust. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, uh, see, what you, see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, should we move on to the white trailer? Yeah, might as well. Yeah, might as well. Okay. Uh, the white trailer, I, I think this was the only one which had just a bit of a, a random release, didn't it? It kind of did, yeah. I mean, I mean like I said, for me, I, all, all of them for me were consistently, because of Crunchyroll, <laughs> so like, all of them were consistently available. Yeah. Well, I, th I think, uh, I, I, I think the, I think the black and yellow trailers, I know, the yellow trailer, certainly. But I think the black trailer as well was also shown at an event. Yeah, I think so. So, I I, say, uh, yeah, so I think, yeah, so I think the white trailer was just random, the only one to be just randomly released. Yeah, um, the, the, white trailer, the white trailer was just there the following week after the red trailer was killed. I think two weeks after, I guess. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't that long, but it was significant enough. Yeah. I guess. Um, the white, White trailer. I remember at the time really liking it. I, yeah, I, I liked it, but I didn't think it was as good as Reed. Yeah. It just didn't it? Didn't have that wow factor having Reed Riding Hood at the time. My mindset wielding a gun, snipe that sniper rifle. That's a, you know, yeah. just hype. That, that I love like sniper Reed. rifles. I love scythes. Two of my favourite things combined with Red Riding Hood. Ah! But with this, it was kind of like, okay, so this is, like, my first instinct was, okay, this is probably Snow, Snow White. Yep. Or, or, a, or a princess of some sort. And she's wielding what appears to be a magic sword. Okay. And she's jumping around, t t destroying the city. And this is when what I like to call the questions started appearing. <laughs> Why is she attacking this armor? What is this armor? How is this armor being powered? What magical essence is she using on the sword? What's for the scar significance? What is all of this is significance? Yeah. The sword? Uh, I, you see where I'm getting at? Yeah, I mean, I have to sort of... Yeah, I have to sort of think about that, because... Um, Obviously, the the red trail was sort of early concepts and everything, but we can very undeniably say that what Ruby was fighting turned out to be the monsters of Grimm. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, that, that, yeah. There weren't that many Christians at the end of Red because it was pretty basic. Yeah. It was um, girl, gunsmith, wolves, dead, done. Yeah, Crazy. but with with the white trail, it's like 
why is she fighting this moving pile of armor? The thing I'm guessing about it is because my sister brought this up. She saw this thing as well. Um, it was it was something that was like you know Snow White standing up to like I, if I recall Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. They had this person called the Huntsman who was supposed to kill Snow yeah. White. Ah. Yeah, Indian. Yeah. So maybe they were trying to trade that. Yes, I mean, obviously at the time we obviously we didn't know barely anything about the series, so it did just seem like she was just fighting this armor. But looking back now, I have to question: Why was she fighting this armor? Where did it come from? Yeah, and then like I said, the Spitfire questions start popping up in your head, yeah. like. What is this? And it kind of um, nullified the um, wow factor of the trailer. Yeah, and I think I think really for me, um, when because I can remember believing Weiss was going to be. I knew she was going to be kind of like high in royalty sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. I could t- I could really tell good. that, but I also thought she was going to be a bit of you know she would have a bit more of a singing background because of the trailer. Hmm. And then, <laughs> okay. yeah. Mm, but, but but let me just let me just say, Mirror Mirror is the best out of the four, to me at least. Uh, yeah, to you, to you, yeah, yeah, I I think yeah. Mirror Mirror was a good one. I mean, I I wouldn't yeah, I think I, it's my most favorite, but it's definitely a good song. Yeah, it, it took a it took a while to grow on me, but I do I do like Mirror Mirror. Mm-hmm. But again, that's the thing. That's why I thought Wise would have would have a bit more of a singing background. And I did think she was going to be the more lonely character. The more reserved yeah. of the bunch. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I thought that too. I thought she was going to be like a lonely person, like in a room regretting something or other. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I thought she was going to be the rich, the rich character, uh, the royal, royal character, but she wasn't going to be the snooty, bitchy type. She would be more reserved. Boy, was Guess I wrong. Well, the one that we got in the series would, was, was was probably lonely, but for completely different reasons. <laughs> yeah. But again, that, we'll get into that a bit later. We will, yeah. Um, so really, that, yeah, the white trailer just kind of... It's, it's, it was just kind of there when you think about it. Yeah, it was. It was the one which sort of left the least impact. It kept the hype going. <laughs> yeah, it kept the hype going because I can definitely remember being excited when, I, um, not long after it aired. Do you try? Do you try finding the crow in that trailer? It's damn near impossible. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Th- so. but yeah. Looking back, I think it is. It's possibly the blandest of the of the of the trailers. Yeah, like I said, you you kind of learn like you don't. I mean, they, I think they said they did say the point of the trailer. They weren't giving out too much about the the actual show with the trailers. It was more to show off the technical side of things. Yeah. But even so, it, it is. Time. Yeah, it is. It may have been that, but it's also meant to be introducing us to these characters. It is yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, moving on to the black trailer. Oh yes, the black trail. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh. The Spitfire questions come in multiple random Yeah, questions. this I can remember this one being the most most polarizing of the trailers, would I think would say. It was, it was, it was like, who is this fucker? Why are who, they attacking the train? Yeah, why are they attacking the train? What are these what are these machines attacking them for? What is why what is they so a robot to begin yeah. with? Why is so she important on the damn train? Why is she saying goodbye to this guy? What is the significance of this? Yeah. Well, it all seems at the end of the show, but <laughs> the bo- at least the one thing that got fucking answered. Yeah. The one fucking. And I think I think we a lot of people were sort of saying this. What's up with the voice acting? Again, yes. Yeah. The voice acting. The first time we. I mean, I thought. Her voice actor was okay. It fit the character, in my opinion. I think it was all right for the. In terms of trailer. In terms yeah. Of trailer, like just just yeah. going from what we learned from the trailer, it was it was passable. Um, pretty much the same for me for Adam actually as well. I didn't well, think it was that. I didn't think it was that bad. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad, but I mean, I will admit, I rewatched I rewatched them recently, and my God, is it? 
It hasn't it hasn't aged well even though it's only been a short while. <laughs> Because it, it's, it's just being really uber serious voice and it, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> Not to mention Adam was voiced by Monty at the time. Was it? Oh god. <laughs> it was Monty. Oh, <laughs> uh, I never knew who voiced Adam. <laughs> I looked it up. Adam was voiced by Monty. Oh so god. He tried to sound super, super serious and like, I... I kept telling myself, Monty, never voice act again. Yeah, because I he just... He trying to be super serious, I always, but he ended up being super serial. Yeah, because I just remember the one line, he goes, What about them? And he's just, oh, God. What about them, Cardo? What about them? <laughs> <laughs> because speaking of which, wait a minute, passengers on the train, what fucking passengers? It was a cargo train! <laughs> Yeah, uh, and that was that was really it. The black trailer left us with so many questions that we were kind of all confused when we, because I can remember at the end of it, we were all going, it was okay, but not as good as the others. Yeah, well, well I, I personally thought it was better than the white trailer. Yeah, I, I, I could just... I thought it was slightly better, but not by much. <laughs> yeah, I, I could just remember being really confused by it, and I was... I didn't Dan know... Yeah, from Shadows, Dan Electric Guitar, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, I like could, it, I from Shadows was a really good song, that's for sure. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I can remember not really liking From Shadows to begin with. Yeah, now, I think, I honestly do think it's my favourite one. Shadows. Yeah, I, I, I love yeah. the guitar riff, it's great. It just, like, in the beginning where it's just the guitar, and I mean, like, just the start intro just kicks it up. For I, me. I, I just, I, I personally just love the little piano bits that it starts in the end. I oh, love those bits. Just... But can we all just agree at trailer time, Blake's weapon was the most impractical weapon? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is it? It's like I was... a gun with a knife on it. I was really, I was really confused as to what her weapon actually was. <laughs> yeah, Same here. I'm like, how does that work? It's like, it, that... Trans, like, it transforms into like a dagger or something. Yeah. <laughs> and... I think, I think that was really the biggest thing about the black trailer. It just left us with so many questions. That we we were all kind of confused about, it and we didn't really know what was going. What just what was this meant to all be? It and left. Then yellow came around. Oh god, yellow. <laughs> oh yellow. Okay, let, let's just say about the yellow trailer. The first time I heard Yang's voice, I really knew Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Barbara. Oh, I, so I'll admit. I'll admit, it was only until really the series started itself that I actually started learning who was voicing all of them. <laughs> I, I never really looked it up. I just kind of... Like, I never really look up stuff like that. Like, yeah, like well, stuff. Barbara was the one I learned. The, 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 the fir Barbara was the first one I learned, because, my God. <laughs> do you, know, do you uh, know that Junior was voiced by Jack Batilla from Ojibana? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was actually it, because he was, out of all the trailers, his was the only voice I actually recognised. <laughs> I went, oh god, it's Jack. <laughs> god damn it, Jack. <laughs> so, we have plot in this one. Yeah, uh, well, you say that. Yeah, you say that, but actually. <laughs> yeah, because I, I can remember the... Watching the, the outro. trailer's got plot, the show's on the other hand. Yeah. Not so much. I can remember watching the yellow trailer and just going, this was so much better than all the others. I... I it was, it was, it was action. I it's not better than Reach, well, but... In <laughs> well, I felt in terms of action, it was better than the black trailer, it was better than the white yes. trailer. Yes. Um, the, the I will trailer. admit, it was kind of on par with the what with the red trailer that, for me. Um, uh, obviously, the biggest thing most people talked about in the, in the yellow trailer was the voice acting. Because even though the black trailer had introduced it, it wasn't as prominent. So we didn't really get a good chance to really see how the voice acting was going to be. And yeah, looking back at the yellow trailer, 
it wasn't the best voice acting. <laughs> I will admit, though, over time, Yang's voice did get progressively better. Oh, they, they all got better. I think as they kind of got more in tune with the roles, they got significantly better from yeah. the trailers through the series, which is good because I remember hearing Ruby's voice for the first time and being like, oh. what the fuck is this? Yeah. What I, is this shit? I, no. I, I, yeah, I'm pretty certain that everybody was disappointed when they heard Ruby's voice for the first I time. Was like, <laughs> no, I, I, I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, what, what, the, what is this shit? <laughs> My my vision of Ruby being like the cool anti heroine just shit. Yeah. Just shit into a million pieces or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I heard Ruby's voice for the first time, I was like, okay. God damn it. (laughs) And and not to mention, I was watching this like while I was on holiday in Lakawi, so. Trying to get Wi Fi over there is a nightmare. So when I first (laughs) saw it and I first heard heard the voice me and my sister went like oh fuck me <laughs> I've, um, kind of, uh, again looking back this is kind of sad because I'm pretty certain the trailer was the most screen time Yang had <laughs> <It's> <laughs> actually <laughs> had and even then who is she looking for who the fuck is this guy who the fuck are these chicks this yeah. Is a pretty awesome nightclub. <laughs> I mean, speaking of speaking of nightclub, club music time. <laughs> yeah, th- yeah, that remix of all three of the trailer songs plus I Burn. I couldn't stop hearing it. The, I couldn't stop hearing it the first time I got my friend to buy it for me. I will admit, I Burn on its own is like growing on me over the like past few weeks. I've just been listening to it nonstop because I just love it. Yeah, I but... just. Well, that, that's I know we're going to be talking about it a bit, bit later, but um, I Burn has actually three different versions. Yeah. It has the trailer version, the original version, and the remix version. All oh, versions. All <laughs> oh, the versions. At least it's at least it's got least versions of his from his world from Sonic. No, 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 no. <laughs> Red, you have to say, Dreams of an Absolution has way more remixes. Oh yeah. Bentley Jones, he goes mental on his remixes. He just fucking remixes stuff like 50 times. Yeah. Like, but, he didn't get it right the first time. He's got to go back and fucking do it again. <laughs> yeah, um... But yeah, just... Uh, go back with the, the ultra. I can remember being excited for everything. Um, but at the same time, I think... I, I was just I was just ready for the series. Yeah, yeah. At my point, it was kind of it was kind of like, okay, this is not gonna be as good as what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> After the um, Yang trailer and looking back at the red trailer, I was just like, this is not gonna be what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. And then, uh, it's not gonna be as good. The, the thing for me is, it was the complete opposite. Me and my sister, me me and Tyler was like, fly me to RTX. Right now, yeah. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was still incredibly hyped, and I still had hope for the series. But it's just it was not as much as what it was after Red. Like after Red was the highest my hype. Got yeah. For it. After Yellow, it was just kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna end up watching this, but I do not think it's gonna be absolutely as fuck. It's not gonna be kill the kill quality hype. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what if what if kill the kill meant Ruby? Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Let, Okay, time to go to DeviantArt. And, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, actually, actually, wasn't that on one of the Crunchyroll's art things? They I, had an actual, that, that is actually on... Did, I found that on DeviantArt as well. I do know where that yeah, is. Yeah, they did that. They did do that. And it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but get, get a bit on topic on the yellow trailer. My only main concern, because I thought these three were pretty cool in the trailer, were Melanie, Milsha, and Junior going to be th- just throwaway characters, or will they reappear somewhere in the series? Yeah, I mean, bit, um, bit honest, <laughs> honestly, I think the Yellow Trailer as a whole did a better time of explaining things and making me feel okay about whether or not these characters will reappear than the Black Trailer did. Yeah, the Black Trailer did. I was going, who what? The fuck is Adam? Yeah, I wanted to know more about Adam. I was because I honestly thought. Uh, Blake and Adam were going to be a tag team throughout the entire series. Mm, yeah. I thought, you know, we'd see the two together a lot more. 
even though she said goodbye in the trailer, perhaps, I thought... Or perhaps he'd reappear in some show. Yeah, I, even though, yeah, like I said, even though Blake said goodbye at the end of the trailer, I thought Adam was going to reappear a lot more in the series. Hunt you down and... Yeah. Um, but in terms of Junior and the twins, I was... I, di I didn't feel... I felt okay if they didn't really appear again. Not that I wouldn't mind it. It's just that I felt, okay, they're more goons. Mm. So, I I didn't really see much more to them. Which is a shame, because they were kind of interesting. But yeah. Mm. And it's, what's really surprising is the fact that the yellow trailer also had the first appearance of Roman. Hmm. He's he's there walking away from the bar uh, to, before Yang walks up. Interesting. And nobody really nobody really mentioned I didn't it that much. Think I noticed that. Yeah, well, nobody I didn't that either. Yeah, nobody mentioned it, but he is there. Um, he's the one who's actually talking to Junior, and then, then he walks away. Um, but yeah, with the yellow trailer. Perhaps perhaps the whole bar thing was a test for Beacon. Again, yeah, but as well. Yeah. <laughs> well speculation at this point. <laughs> everything's speculation at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so yeah, I think that's really, really it with the trailers. I think, though, getting back at this, even though it was still there, I kind of felt like the whole style of the series was starting to disappear with the yellow trailer. Yeah. You I, see, that's what I mean. That's what I mean by like my hype was starting to dim down because it wasn't as. Uh, yeah. so it's I mean, the, really the going, black but, the <laughs> black trailer definitely it definitely recaptured that style in oh, in a did, sense. Did. Black is good. Yeah. Yeah, because I think everything in the train wasn't that good looking. Everything outside the train, when you actually saw the forest, that looked amazing. Yeah, it looked fucking nice, yeah. But, um... Yeah, with the yellow trailer... Granted, everything in the... The bar did have a style, but I don't think it worked that well. Yeah. And, I I think, and, as, and as yeah. soon as I leave the bar, it, it, the world looked very basic. Mm. Though, we still have, still have the question of what is up with the moons? What the hell? This isn't this isn't Blinks the Cat where there's like a giant gaping hole in the moon for no fucking reason. <laughs> in every trailer, we saw the moon looking different, and we've still never had an explanation for that. I'm guessing there's like more than one in that retrospect, or maybe there was an event or something. Either that or Doctor Eggman's reenacting the Inventor Sonic Adventure two again. <laughs> Times four. He fucked it up the first time, so he's got to um, rebuild the moon and do it again. Yeah. I mean, maybe there was a reason given, but it's the fact that it hasn't been said in the series. It hasn't yeah. been said in the trailers, so a lot of people probably won't even know it. So if there is a reason already given, we don't know about it. Mm. Um... So yeah, so that's really up in the trailers. Um, so let's get into the build up to episode one. Fuck all on mine. <laughs> Pretty well, much what happened was after the after the yellow trailer for me, it just kind of like all the media ish kind of went because I wasn't like majorly following the series at that point. I was just kind of like, yeah, when it comes out, I'll watch it. I <laughs> so, I wasn't majorly following it as well, but. I can remember the night episode one was going to debut, they were holding a special event for it. I don't remember that. Um, mm. I think it was something to do with MTV as well. Um, Maybe. I think, yeah, because I, I know, I know they had to... <laughs> Who watches MTV anymore? No, 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 what? well, they, stre they streamed the event, I was watching that. Uh. Um, but I can remember... Because they said, like, go to this page and you can watch a special interview before episode one premieres. And a special clip of episode one. Um, and I can remember actually reading the little bit of text explaining the series. Uh, that they'd put on there. And... <laughs> one word. 
well actually two words caught my caught my eye and instantly made me question the entirety of the series it's two words attending school oh yeah oh god <laughs> Yeah. Can you just can you just spell high school drama like right yeah. in front of our eyes with billboards and neon lights? Because not nothing throughout the trailers had hinted at there being a school that the characters were going to be going to. Stop it. <laughs> what? That's, so, like, that's the vibes I got. Yeah. <laughs> So it was just the fact that when I found out that the characters are going to be attending school throughout the series, I was like, oh god, that's so cliche. It, and it just sort of destroyed a lot of the thoughts I had. Um, the got, hype train has officially crashed into the sun. Uh, <laughs> I've already crashed into the moon. Um, <laughs> it missed the sun and hit the moon. Four times. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll I mean, yeah, because honestly, I thought throughout the trials, I thought that the idea was going to be uh, they were just going to be traveling their world, occasionally meeting up, um, and just co just basically completing missions and then eventually coming together to become Team Ruby. You continue, you continue. I gotta sort this fucking dog. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's basically what I thought the series was going to be. As soon as I heard they were going to be attending school, I went, oh, God, it's going to be Soul Eater, isn't it? <laughs> it, it, cause it essentially was. It's like, oh, the characters are going to school and the main character wields a scythe. Ruby is the modern-day Maka Albarn. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going, oh, God, I, I, I like Soul Eater and I've watched it, so I don't need another series trying to be it. And... That, that was... And, I mean, I was, and it I was, nearly did. It nearly did, honestly. Yeah. I was, <sighs> cause I was watching... I can remember watching the clip uh, that they showed, which was um, just that little bit of um, when Ruby first unveils herself and then smashes the guy out the window. Uh, that was the clip they showed, and I can just remember hearing, uh, this will be the day for the first time. I was going, that song rocks. <laughs> yeah. I, I, immediately, I immediately told my friend, buy this song for me. I will pay you later. Because <laughs> that song was like... That song pretty much just set the tone for Ruby. That song was pretty much the greatest thing I've ever heard for a while. Yeah. Um, cause, you know, like, like I said, that... Cause I watched the... Um, I watched like, the, the pre-episode one interviews and everything. Like, they, had, they had some of the characters there in, in cosplay... Which is pretty cool, actually. That sexy cosplay. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I think. Kill the kill cosplay. <laughs> Cause I think they had. I think if I'm if I'm right, they had Blake and Yang, in the in the back of the room just in cosplay. That's <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> no reason. Just gonna s just be here and just be like YOLO. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was basically everything. We know. So, I was really excited until I heard attending school. Then my my interest did take a nosedive. So I, I mean, if I saw that too, I'd be like, "Oh God, no!" Yeah. <laughs> when you've watched plenty of anime, you don't want characters attending school again. Um, when you read fanfiction, you don't want the characters attending school <laughs> <laughs> for completely different reasons. <laughs> Oh god. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So, I guess that sort of brings brings us on to the main, the main bit. Attraction. The main attraction, the series itself. Spoiler warning: We're going to talk about spoilers. Yeah, we there are going to. Go. Yeah, if don't in, say case I didn't you, warn you. in case you don't know, yeah, we're going to be talking about the entirety of the series. So yeah, spoilers. If you haven't watched the show, go watch it. It's only like, what, probably half an hour? <laughs> <laughs> it's, about an hour it's about an hour and a half. About an hour and a half, you can come back and yeah. say hi. <laughs> it's, not as if, it's not as if it's going to be hard to watch, considering it's on Rooster Teeth's website, Crunchyroll, 
and YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. It's pretty much everywhere. Yeah. But um, yeah. So uh, I think we're going to do this in the in the general style of our season reviews. Mm. But I think, mm. but I think at first we're going to be we're going to be focusing on the good points. So we're going to. <laughs> we'll talk about the good first, then we'll talk about the bad. Episode 8 was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, look, I think, because I, obviously, as is my style with season reviews or any show that I'm watching over a season, I do make notes as I watch them about what I liked, what I didn't. So. Organized, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I talk out of my ass, so. <laughs> I'm going to talk. Uh, just list off my good points. Uh, so, first off, great designs. I yeah, I I do love all the designs in in Ruby. Like, I think I think the world itself can be interesting, while the backgrounds and all the sets yeah. are pretty bland. Well, honest. that's probably more technical limitations. Yeah, than but in, yeah. In, ter in terms of the characters, they're definitely very interesting. They're very unique, um, and they all they all do stand out. That's something that I like. It's it's easy to distinguish everyone. Mm. Oh, I thought I, I thought the card dropped then. <laughs> yeah, well, Everybody's been quiet. Know what to say. No, okay. Well. The thing with me is, episodes yeah. 1 through 8 were pretty good. Episodes 15 and 16 were pretty good. 9 and 10 yeah, were kind of uh, meh. Well, 9 and 10 were kind of meh. Even though we had character development, they were kind of meh. Because it was... Yeah. And then 11 through to 14, what the fuck show? What are you doing? Stop. Well, well, <laughs> we'll get, again, we'll get into that a little bit later. That, that's, um, that's me. Let, yeah, let me, let me just finish this. So, obviously, great designs. Awesome soundtrack, as we'll talk about later. Oh, an, an interesting world. It was. It, it, yeah, after the explanation episode one, it did seem quite interesting. Yeah. The dust and whatnot. Yeah. What they set up in episode one, the thing they talked about at the start, very interesting. The way the world works, very interesting. Um, definitely has a lot of potential. Um when it shines, it shines. And I think we can all agree, obviously episode 8, that is the series at its best. Mm. Um, no, I'll say that much. Yeah. <sighs> um, the long, longer episodes really showcase the best of the show. I agree, completely. Uh, yes. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, the longer the episodes... The better it somehow became. Um, uh, yeah, this will get into so this will definitely be leaning into something that we'll talk about a little in a little bit. Episode fifteen gives us a ton of development. Fucking hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. It's like they kind of were like, "Oh, we didn't get we didn't we didn't give you any development on the main group for like four episodes. Here you go, have it all in one." Just. <laughs> Here you go. They, 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 just, they, just, they just balled up a giant ball of development and they just like, threw it in your face. Like, here, there it's you like go. A, it's, like a giant, it's like a giant snowball at the top of a mountain and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger until it hits you in the face. Yep. <laughs> and them. you become part of the snowball. Yep. You become part of the development. It develops you. <laughs> in uh, Soviet Russia, Rupert <laughs> develops you. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, so this is going to be my last good point, but it's also going to lead directly into my first bad point. It has a strong ending, but it doesn't feel as satisfying as it should have been. I agree completely with that. Yeah. I, I, I do. I, I wanted more at the end of 16. Honestly, honestly, at the end of 16, it left me with more questions than I had my questions answered. Yeah. Who the fuck are these furry people? <laughs> what the fuck is what? up with Penny? <laughs> hey. What is Crow talking about? Jesus. Yeah. Uh, okay. My other, my other bad point. 
a bit of a slow pace. I will, yeah. yeah. Took about it, eight it, episodes to keep it going, and then you decide to slow the fuck back down again. Yeah, <laughs> it, it took half the series for them to basically finally become Team Ruby. Yeah. But when you actually... Have you ever seen that so small as well? Like, your small episodes are not a good sign. Yeah. Cause, I mean, ultimately, that could have been done in at least episode four or five. That could have been done way quicker as well. If you, uh, To be honest with you, I probably would have waited longer for each episode if they made them longer. Yeah. So let's say instead of having an episode every week, we had an episode maybe every two weeks, but they were twice as long. That is what they should have done. Well, essentially, that's what we got for the because last episode, and it worked. Yeah, exactly. They did that with the last episode, and it worked beautifully. But, so, I don't, like, I... Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, and sort of uh, talk about that. The short episodes that drag things out. This, yeah, this was, truth be told for me, this was most prevalent um, during the forest, when they were in the forest. I just felt yeah. like those episodes were just dragging on for so long. Five, six, seven kind of did drag on. Yeah, they, they, it just sort of felt like they had no reason to be so short. They could have mm. condensed those episodes together, they would have worked a lot better. Because it, it's just the fact that we came back week after week mm. and all we were getting was just a tiny little bit. Tiny little bit. Yeah. Just, eh, yeah. like, stop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was a, that was a bit annoying. Um, the, oh, come here. In you come. The animation, no, no, no. yeah, the animation quality was a bit all over the place. That is true. Yeah. Um, I, I, there are plenty of gifts out there that will illustrate that. Yeah. I do hate bringing this up because obviously I I do know how hard it is to animate in 3D. And I know yeah, I, mean, I know how they're doing it, which is very difficult. Um, yeah. Which is why I kind of don't like seeing people on Twitter and like other things like bashing the animation quality. They're doing the best with what they can. Yeah, they're, <laughs> um, they're doing the absolute best. I have the utmost respect for how much effort they've put into it but yeah at times it does show it, it, it just uh... derpy wise <laughs> derpy wise no 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 that that was intentional yeah i know I, I know that was intentional but it still cracks me up <laughs> derpy wise <laughs> um... i still can't believe they put that in i know that's great i love that but <laughs> i think i think for me just a little bit which brings my brings my attention is is mainly with the hands. I just sort of noticed that the, yeah. at times the hands don't feel as as well animated as they could have been. Given that's the probably hand. the hardest fucking place to animate. I know. <laughs> but at times at times they do it really well and at other times it's just very awkward. Like when the, Ruby the hands don't feel like human hands. Yeah. They don't feel natural. Yeah, it's like when Ruby was throwing the, the cookies into her mouth. <laughs> I wa I wasn't really questioning the disappearing cookies. I was questioning just a hand motion. She was just palm no. she was just palming she was just palming one of them and it just goes out one one. Yeah, it looked like the cookie was being suction cupped to her hand rather than her actually grabbing it. Um, technical limitations. Yeah, I mean of, it's all of course you still you still shouldn't use technical limitations that are crutch to get yourself out of <laughs> Yeah. It, it, bad shit. But yeah, I mean, granted, yeah, I can't really complain too much about this because I know how difficult this is. First hand. <laughs> mm. So... Mister, I, I tried to make Ruby on MMD and turn out evil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not, not that. Can you put... No, you, you should put that in here. Just um, <laughs> make it like a... No, make it like a like quick flash of jump skier. Just... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I am not gonna put. I am not gonna put my Akara model into into it as a jump scare. Either. I I don't know. I just assume it on the face. She's, she's now called Evil Ruby, and she's now the mascot of Attack of Blaze. She is the yes. she is the Attack of yes. Blaze mascot. 
Cara Bradford. We're going to change the logo. Just have you on the side of the set of pants. <laughs> Were you rewatching Matamote when you when you did this? <laughs> Because <laughs> she looks just like her. <laughs> Almost. Uh, I did the um, best I could with M and D. Okay. Uh, no, I know. It'll happen. On we it. understand. We don't. We don't have M M D, so it's okay. Yeah, it's not just M and D though. Well, I've, well, I've, well, yeah, <laughs> you have to remember. I've also worked with like Cinema Four D and everything, animating stuff with that. God, yeah. God, I'm, I'm still back trying to, I'm still trying to get rid of that. Back to Ruby. Yeah, back to um, Ruby. And it's sort of, um, it's sort of built upon what I was talking about with short episodes. Um, I don't think it works as a weekly series. No, that's what I mean. Yeah, it does. And they, they, they should have made it two weeks or even longer, so yeah. they could have those longer episodes and get yeah, more exposition um, out. Or, yeah. or, or they could have planned it like six, seven months beforehand. That would and have been probably then, better on the <laughs> Well, and, and, and you made the episode and then you released it. No, no, well, if anything, because um, I've also put it that it works much, much better when marathoned. Oh, yeah. When you marathon yeah. the series, it feels a lot better. It, wor it, it, it flows it's much better. This is what me and Hunter was talking about a couple of days ago when I was telling him that I marathoned it for like two days. Yeah. Yeah, when you marathon the series, it, it flows so much better, so much more smooth. Um, so it makes me think that... It, yeah, so what, it makes me think that it shouldn't be a weekly series, it should be at least a daily series. That, yeah. So Planet of Heat, yeah. the episode and then release them day yeah, just, by day. Just say like, <laughs> just for what, maybe like one or two weeks of length. So either seven episodes or 14 episodes as and a whole. That way you can continue working on the next season while you're airing the season that you just finished. E.g. Yeah. You're, you're, you're better prepared for shit. Yeah, so. just just finish the entire series, get it all finished, then just release it in one or two weeks at certain points of the year. Then mm. boom. Because you'll still get the same amount of views. Possibly even more, because yeah. then people will just be instantly coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, we just skip straight to the what would we do differently part of the Oh, no, 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 because I, I did put, that, put it here, that. So, because, um, I mean, again, going with this, the script can be quite awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Some... Some little moments, it didn't seem I think natural. one of my quotes, my, one of my quotes from a previous podcast, I could write a better story than this. <laughs> I think we, I think we've all said we could write something better at some point. <laughs> I could I could write a better story than this. So, I mean, I, I'm an actual fan fiction writer. Come on. Yeah, because I mean, obviously I have the <laughs> utmost respect for, uh, for the guys, you know, Miles and Kerry. I. I do trust them. I mean, like I said, when the series is marathoned, it does work smoother. It does run a lot better. I do think perhaps the script issue could probably be resolved with a bit more time to work on said script, possibly. Well, again, uh, again, I don't think it's that. I think it's just the fact that it's being released weekly. That, that yeah, it make yeah. it doesn't make it makes it doesn't make it seem as natural as it should be. When you marathon it, it works. Individually, it doesn't, and because when they were writing the script, they were probably just writing episode by episode. So mm, yeah. they were probably marathoning the scripts. Mm. Um. So yeah. Um. And sort of going with this, I felt like the story, the actual story itself, from for volume one, just practically vanished. Up until episode eight. Oh uh, yeah. And yeah. and then it vanishes. And then, and then it, yeah, and then it came. vanishes. Then it vanishes again until episode fifteen. And then it came back. Well, the thing 
is, is you keep forgetting Nine and Ten. The thing with Nine and Ten is, is that there was at least some development there. Was it much? No, 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 no. They got somewhere. Because, really, for me, the first episode explains... It's a good showcase episode for what the series is going to be. Okay? And what did we have in episode one? We had Ruby going up against Roman, who made his escape with... Uh, Whoever the fuck that other chick is. I, I think... I think <laughs> isn't it Crimson? Something like that. I think it's... Yeah, I think it's Crimson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so we had them, them running off and everything. So I thought they were going to be... Very significant as a part. But not that. <laughs> yeah. So they don't reappear. Roman doesn't reappear until at the end of episode 8. So I went, okay, finally. We're going to see what he's been up to. What? And what is he planning? High school shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> then he disappears again and until... More high school shenanigans. Until episode 15 when Ruby actually mentions him. Mm. And that's what, that's what actually really annoyed me about the script. Because Ruby actually said that months had passed Fuck. since she fought Roman. I was going, okay, what happened in all that time in between? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh no, kind of, you know what happened? Jean, Jean had to be a pretty boy, and uh, we had to sort out his problems, and, um, you, you know, his, his bullying issues and whatnot. Which was vastly more important, in my opinion. Just yeah. you know, not being sarcastic. Well, again, again, right? again, again, that was that. You can't, you can't talk shit about John because everybody seems to love John. <laughs> oh God, I hate John so much. Well, that, that's, no, the problem. Okay, well, let me get this out because I'm gonna keep interrupting you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen is quite possibly the worst fucking part of the series for me because it's this I've seen this so many times dickhead blackmails the hero hero does something to save the dickhead they're all done and fine in the end yeah what did we learn other than that fuck yeah all. I mean I was, I was... Complete, you can take out those four fucking episodes and skip straight from episode 10 to episode 15 and it's as if nothing fucking happened exactly that's Why what I was, that was actually something I was going to bring up or you could make a side series with Sean on it. You know, like yeah. how to argue well, it. Is. Well, uh, let, me, let me just. Or some shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> let me just say, because I actually made a note about this, because I, I did actually say, well, I actually put here, later episodes just keep getting worse, but really, I wrote that during those Jean episodes. Yes. That's, the series literally came to a standstill because Pretty Boy John had to sort out his high school problems. And yeah. the problem is, John as a character is not bad. It's just what they did with him that pisses yeah, me off. Yeah, the, the thing like, is... I don't mind him yeah, as a well, character. Again, that, that, well, this is what I was going to say. It's like, I don't mind John. I have zero problem with John. The yeah. problem I have is the fact that we didn't come to this series for John. We didn't no, come we to didn't see John. Came That's here. Yeah, I, we came here yeah, for Ruby. <laughs> yeah, we came here for Ruby and... Really, up until that point, we had very little time with Ruby. Because half the time was spent with Jean. Or Weiss. Or someone else. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. That's the thing, though. That's the thing. Jean appeared in almost every single episode. At one point in the series, he had more appearances than Ruby herself. And this it's, is... it's almost as if John is like a fucking creator trying to put himself in the series, possibly. Well, he is vo he is voiced by Miles. Ha! Speculate. The conspiracy has started. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, here's, here's the thing, though. It's like, because, I mean, kind of what you were saying, right, so about if you take out those episodes, nothing of value will be lost. And that is completely true. The Cause... only thing we learn is that What's her name? Check that's just like a spot, and I can't remember her name because I can't Pir names really easy. Pira. Yeah, Pira. she Pira, Pira has magnetic powers or some shit. That's the pretty much the only thing of value that we learn. Yeah. Is that she has magnetic powers. Honestly, like other than that, the rest of it can just go yeah. to hell as far as I'm concerned. Um, cause yeah, I'll just, um I'll just say this right now because I love uh, Team Juniper. 
I think they're all great I characters. Think, yeah. yeah, they're yeah, all characters. brilliant. I mean, who doesn't love Nora? Nora! Nora! Nora. <laughs> Yeah, we all we all like. love <laughs> we all love Team Juniper, Juniper, but I firmly believe they should not have been introduced in Volume One. No, they should have been introduced much, or maybe the end of Volume One, somewhere near the end. Maybe at, at, the, at the at the least. I somewhere near the I end. honestly thought Volume One was going to be the formation of Team Ruby and their first major victory. Major Those, victory slash mission. Yeah, that's what I thought uh, Volume 1 was going to be. Volume 2, I thought maybe they've gone up a World year. Building. Yeah, they, they've gone up a year. The new students have come in. Those could have been Team Juniper. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That would have been interesting. Yeah. But no. <laughs> yeah, because obviously, because of the trailers, we came here for Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang. And... Half the time, and at one point, barely little time was spent with them. Yeah. Also, did anyone find it highly, highly weird that the symbol on Jean's shield looks suspiciously like the Crunchyroll symbol? <laughs> 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 like, I, like every time I see his shield, every, every time I see his shield, I'm just thinking, well, uh, some money must have been passed through this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Something I mean, happened here. Well, just um, just think about those those four Jean episodes. It's like, because obviously, there's only really one moment, one moment where Ruby really comes into, and has any relevance in those four episodes. And even then, it doesn't do yeah, anything. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's the one. It's just basically where she's talking to Jean about being a leader. And at that point, I was going. Well, what makes you so qualified to give him this discussion when you have barely proved yourself as a leader as is already? Since one episode ago, you were questioning, like uh, two episodes or so yeah. ago, you were questioning whether or not you were worthy to be the fucking leader. So and what now, the fuck happened? Yeah. Now you're saying, oh, we've got to do the best for our teams. And it's like, well, you haven't really had much of a chance to act as a team, to act as a leader. So I don't think these episodes fit. Yeah, like uh, I said, if you're going to watch the series, I would just skip these four episodes and just go straight to 15. Like, yeah. you don't need them. You really don't. Yeah, I mean, you could... These episodes could have very easily have been the opening of Volume 2. Yeah. I mean, I'd still be fucking pissed off about it because yeah. I don't like blackmail. But yeah, still, it, I wouldn't be as mad about it because in a, in a show with such small episodes and such little time to do stuff, why is there filler? Yeah. Yeah, and again... Why, 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 this isn't Naruto. Yeah, and again, <laughs> why, if we have so little time, are you focusing on the B team when we know very little about the A team? Until 15, which is quite... But again, again, those four episodes could have very easily have been focused on Yang. That would have been great. Yeah, Love because... More yeah, because Yang has nothing to do all series. Pretty much, she's just kind of there. Yeah, she's just completely... Uh, all, all Yang was, all, in all series, was trying to be Ruby's moral compass. Yeah, much, un yeah, until yeah. until episode 8. Then it's like, I'm after sure episode 8, me. nothing. Mm -hmm. They could have very easily given Yang some focus in those episodes. Spe speaking of Yang, punching things with my fists. <laughs> yeah, if, uh... you, you You messed up my hair, I will now punch you hard. Yeah. Oh god, that reminds me of the image card I linked through Twitter where it's like, if she goes bald, the fucking <laughs> just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I just think that really, the series as a whole, Volume 1, it, fo it begins on, with Focus on Ruby, then it focuses a little bit on Weiss. A little bit. We yeah. got a little bit of character development, which I thought, like I said, that's fine. It yeah. was sort of dull, not, but yeah, it was not, still... Yeah, not my favourite. Not my favourite yeah, episodes, but there was at least a little bit of character development there. They have, they have a reason to exist, and it keeps yeah. the cogs tuning, even if it's slow. Yeah. Which is then, what, the, those, the, the, what we're going to now refer to as those four episodes yeah. did not do. Yeah. 
Then we have those four episodes which focus on Jean, and then we have the final three episodes which clearly focus on Blake. Yes. So where Do was I like you? Because I wanted to know more about him. Yeah, everybody and wanted to know more about Blake. Mm. Again, because of the black the trailer. trailer. Yeah, yeah, even through the black trailer, she's the one that we knew the least about at the beginning. So yeah, the black trailer at least left, left us with the most questions, so the fact that we finally got some answers was great. But, but like I, I was, I knew. but yeah, I like we was, like I was saying, yeah. where's Yang's focus in there? Yeah. What did she have to do? Nothing. Please, and what what? Please have something like this come up and see. Yeah, but what on. what what sort of gets me is the fact that uh, they've said that Blake was actually the hardest character for them to write for. But she so, turned out to be the most well written character in the show. <laughs> <laughs> you say much. that. I say that, but then again, compared to the others. Yeah, but again, what John. what I mean by what I mean by that is the fact that okay, Blake's the hardest character to write for, but you barely wrote anything for Yang. Yeah, come on. You could have done anything for Yang, pretty much. Like, I like what could have you done for Yang? Like, they ve they very clearly could have done um, some episodes where she's trying to uh, get Ruby to. You know, just start, start talking to more people. Yeah, or something trying to like trying that. to just be the older sister, while at the same time yeah. trying to get closer to Blake. Are you a shit, Ricardo? No. <laughs> it's just no. It's just the fact that Ruby and Weiss, they they were teamed up. Blake and Yang were teamed up. We got yeah, plenty of time with Ruby and Weiss. We got barely anything with Ruby and with um, Blake and Yang. Yeah, you see the red. You see the red suit. This ship sail, This ship sails itself. <laughs> it does. Yeah. yeah. Especially with the fan fiction. Which oh we, God. Uh, <laughs> last week. We, we will get to. It. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say when you were you saw we had we we were like in a two hour call. <laughs> we just yeah. did some random shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, like I say, it it they had no reason to focus on Jean. Yeah. Oh, again, at least right now, if they really wanted to introduce Team Juniper in Volume One, then they sh at least shouldn't have had any focus on them until Volume Two. Yeah, they should have just been side support. Yeah. Except for Nora. Yeah. Nora needs to become the new main character. They need to rename the show Nora. <laughs> they need to have all the character development go to Nora. That, that's the final say. Yeah. Nora needs to become that's, the character. No, 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 no. What, what do you think would happen if Nora and Penny met each other? <laughs> oh, my God. You know they're going to do that eventually. The world would implode on itself. They, they have to do that. They just have to. The fandom, you see, the fandom demands it. Not yep. Monty has to admit. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I just, uh, finally getting back to the, my list. <laughs> um, yeah, just sort of getting back to what you were saying about Blake being the best written. Because <laughs> I've got here, characters, ma characters, mainly Blake, are not as consistent as others. What I mean by this is, because uh, I've put here, Blake acts really distant, then suddenly, out of nowhere, is all buddy-buddy in episode 9. Where the hell does that come from? I don't know. Yeah, because everything Maybe up until that... She wasn't well written at the start, but she got better. <laughs> When every everything every appearance Blake had at the start of the series, she was very distant, very, you know, she just liked reading a book. That's all she wanted to do, just read a book. And I was going, that's fine, that's interesting. I want to know more about you. Mm. Then, like she, I, even during everything in the forest, she still seems very distant. Distant, yes. Yeah, she. Not, not, not to mention. Not to mention, she didn't launch off. She didn't launch into the Emerald Forest. You yeah. realize that. Yeah, she she just she Not just appears. She was there. So. 
And it's like, oh, oh you want to know why I didn't notice that? Because Jean's launch got the most fucking highlight. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it, 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 even during everything in the forest, she still didn't say much. She was just sort of teaming up with Yang. And that's what made me interested in saying, okay, is Yang going to be trying to get closer to Blake? Mm. And now, even in the um, podcast Rooster Teeth just recently did with all the four voice actors for the girls, they even themselves said that, that Yang should be trying to get closer to Blake. Mm. But she doesn't. She doesn't do anything. And... Or episodes of character development on shit. Yeah. But Blake, you know, in episode eight, she's still very distant. She's yeah, she is talking to the rest of them, but it's mainly just to survive, really. Mm, yes. And then in episode maybe, not, maybe, and then maybe, maybe, start, they, maybe they thought, you know, Yang was too OP and she needed a nerf. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just that little bit at the start of episode nine where she just suddenly goes Banzai with with uh, Ruby and Yang. It's like, why would she do that? I'm here. Look at me. I'm part of the group now. <laughs> yeah, I, I just... It's like, why would she do that? I could see Ruby and Yang doing it, but not Blake. At least not right now. I mean, granted, yes, we did have that little joke about the book. That was brilliant. That works. At least if she did the bonsai, she'd be like a bit more reserved bonsai, like bonsai or something like yeah, that. Yeah, a bit more, but a bit more no. embarrassed that she's doing it. Really, uh, if she if she looked embarrassed, then I probably wouldn't have. Character development. Yeah, <laughs> it would have it would have fit her a bit more. Um, Character development. You're doing it wrong. And again, and then just a little bit. I think it was in, no, it was in the next episode. She's just randomly waving that little flag. It's like, <laughs> why? What Again, I, shit? if anything, I was just going to see her just re still reading a book, just going, oh. go, wise, go. Go, wise, go. Yeah, that's that's what I pretty much expected her to do. But no, she's waving a little flag going, go, wise, you could do it. Why? Um, other little bits... Um, mainly about Ruby, um, how she becomes really, and I do mean really childish, while in class in episode 9. She kind of did act quite a bit childish um, in that yeah. episode. Also, that duck face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Honestly, honestly, I don't see the problem with the fact that she's acting childish when everyone forgets the fact that she's 15 and everybody else is 17. No, 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 no. It's 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 not that. It's what I mean by acting really childish was when she was picking her nose. Yeah, that was a bit too far. Uh, yeah. That, yeah that, that one was a bit too far. That was a bit I had problem with. Everything else was kinda like, yeah, it kinda fits. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. doing like doing like the silly drawing and everything. I could understand that. Mm, and like speaking. balancing everything on her finger. I, yeah, that, that is something like a normal, you know, secondary school student would do. Yeah. No speaking is more kindergarten, and yeah. Cause I, I know, I know Ruby is meant to be a bit young and a little bit immature, but not like that. A little bit much. That, that's like kindergarten stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if if anything, you just needed to have like you did have a falling asleep in class. Because if anything, that's all you needed to have a doing. For what Pretty for what much. was being discussed, you could have just had her falling asleep and just slowly falling backwards. That's uh and just the last little bit of inconsistency. Well, I'm not really sure if this is an inconsistency, more just them um, dropping a plot point. Mm. Um, it's how at the start of the series, Ruby is very worried about making friends. Yeah, that kind of went out the window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it just sort of vanishes. It's kind of like, hey kids, you got the same problem Ruby has? Well, it'll sort itself out eventually. Yeah, it's, it's like, 
as soon as she meets up with Weiss, boom, gone. Granted, they don't get a, they don't get along to begin with, but the problem's never really brought up again. No, really, no. Like she talks to all the other members of Team Juniper. She talks to Penny and Son and that lot instantaneously. So it's just like the problem of talking to other people just vanishes. It's all thanks to Weiss. Hmm. But again, again, this is this was sort of my problem because we have we had no real idea about the time scale that everything was going on until episode fifteen when Ruby says that months had passed since she'd fought Roman. Months, months had passed. Yeah, and I was going months, really? Yeah, bit of a time lapse. Yeah, if anything, this should have just been weeks. That would have been a little bit better. Well, would have... maybe a few weeks, not, you know, I mean, let's be honest, we don't really know how long they were in that fucking jungle for. Um, they're, if you, mar again, if you marathon it, they're barely in there for about ten minutes. True, however, <laughs> like, there's probably other parts where they could have done jumps. Well, consider like... considering we never saw the night sky, I'm guessing they were only in there for about a day. Well... Fuck it. <laughs> exactly. This is what I mean. It's not... They could have very easily have uh, explained how much time had passed, how much things moved on, but they didn't. And so it, when Ruby says that months had passed, I was going, that's a little unbelievable, really. A little bit too much, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and again, they kind of do this a little bit later in uh, with the finale. It's like, Blake runs off at the end of episode 15. We see a meeting sun. And then apparently a weekend had passed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's only after this weekend that Blake starts talking about herself. Mm -hmm. And they do they do say this at the start of episode 16. Say, like, sun says, like, all you've been giving me is, uh, like, weird glances and small talk. Small and weird looks. Yeah, and I was going, I found that a bit hard to believe. Yeah, like that one. <laughs> that was actually a good yeah, joke. Come on. I love, that was actually quite funny. I that do was love, quite funny. I love all the faces Blake gives in episode 16. <laughs> like, that was actually quite good. <laughs> I yeah. I love that bit. But I, I just think that I, even for Blake, I find it a bit unbelievable that the two were hanging out for an entire weekend and they, and Ruby, and only randomly does Blake start talking about herself. Yeah. If it was the next day, then... Maybe we'll see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's just a... It's a bit hard to see where things are going with the characters. It could have been... It could have been handled a bit better. Could have been a lot worse, too. Oh, yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot Honestly, when it comes to like these sort of stories, like revealing someone else's past, they should ease us into this shit, not throw it in their face. Yeah, throw I mean, uh, there was there was one bit which I was kind of thinking about, that, which they really should have done, because um, mm. really, the whole thing about the faunus, um, it's briefly mentioned at the start of episode one. Yeah. Oh, during episode one, really. Uh, then it's not mentioned again until Velvet. When, well, I tell you what, that bunny's going to come back and kick some serious fucking yeah, ass. Yeah, and this, this is what bugs me. So, again, I like Velvet. But it's the fact that she never got any payback of any sort. She, you know, she just that she just got bullied. Wasn't resolved. That plot yeah. wasn't resolved. Yeah, she, she just got bullied. And it makes me feel really sorry for her. So it, it felt like that was just left. Like she was just forgotten about. Yeah. And... Um, really what because what I feel like they should have done something they didn't do they really should have um, like we were saying with easing us into like the reveal of Blake as a faunus um, when Velvet was like running away crying they should have really panned to Weiss and just have a sort of just look at Velvet before going back to doing her nails mm. 
just that little bit is would have shown that there's some sort of connection between Weiss and the Faunus. Yeah. So that when she exploded, we could kind of see, ah, so that's why she was looking at Velvet. Yep. See, a little bit, it's just a small thing, but it would have worked wonders. I also love how they mentioned the train. Yes. <laughs> So the, so we can now officially say that the trailers are continuity. Well, we got, we always knew that because Weiss has a scar on her face from throughout the entire series. That is true. That is true. But I mean, like in serial story perspective, like not just little tiny things like the scar and whatnot. Yeah, but I mean that that does beg the question of then, why was Who Ruby? The why fuck was? Is Adam? <laughs> yeah, it begs the question of why was Ruby fighting all those wolves? Why was Weiss fighting that armor? She just been walking in the forest and then she got attacked by wolves, you know. Yeah, but why? <laughs> well, she was visiting some sort of grave or something. I don't mm. know, maybe it's like mother or dad or something. Who knows? Possibly. Like, we like, we don't actually know if Ruby's, like, like there's still the question going on of whether or not she's adopted or not, so perhaps maybe it was parents. Like, we don't know that, yep. so. It, it, it just sort of started... You know, when they started bringing the trailers into continuity, it just, it just made me question, like, okay, are they actually going to explain more about what was going on for those, for those trailers? Yeah, especially, especially in Yang's one, because Yang's one had a lot of shit going on that we yeah. have no idea what's going on. Again, that's why I wanted episodes focusing on Yang. Yes. If they'd at least get, given us the idea that she is looking for this, for this person in the photo. Hmm. It also reminds me is that we actually do know that Ruby does have some form of family in the form of a grandfather, I believe. Yeah, correct. Of some description. Crow. Yeah, correct. We, we, we know that he's, she, she's got some form of connected family in some respect, but yeah. not really evaluated. All, all, we know about, all we know about Crow is that he's the one who he's a, taught... He's a weapons, he's yeah. a weapons specialist. Yeah, right? he's the one who taught Ruby how to use, how to use Ruby Rose. Um... And and we also know that he's got some sort of connection to Ozpin. Yeah, at the end of episode 16, um, Crow messaged uh, Ozpin. Yeah. With some cryptic message that we don't know until we get fine to. Yeah, I think mean, this sort of... Well, <coughs> hopefully. Um, cause I mean, this sort of brings me to something that I actually did post, uh, send to... Oh, I actually posted on on Twitter, but you can find it on TV now as well. Oh yeah, that, that picture you yes. Yeah. And it basically, it was this one picture somebody one picture somebody made and it listed all the stuff we learnt from volume one and all the stuff we didn't. Mm. And really when you look at things when you look at that image, all the stuff we most of the stuff we learnt from volume one didn't wasn't really all that important. I mean it was still important but it wasn't nope. It didn't explain a lot. Like we know, it said like we know who these people are, but we don't know mm-hmm. about them. We don't know really who they are. Yeah. There's still so much mystery about all the characters. Mm. I mean, gra- granted, yeah, we did learn a lot about Blake, and I thank them for that because I mean. Grand- she was I, the one that didn't have the most banks. Well, other than Yang, but you know, <laughs> Blake. They were they were equal until she got the backstory. Yeah, Blake basically comes out of the series being the most developed character. Because we now we now know her, her backstory. We know about you know how hard it was for her growing up, um, doing all these missions. Why she left the uh, the White Fang. And how she ended up at the school. But even then, I do kind of find that a bit unbelievable. I don't know why. Of course, I've, I've got the image here. But we still don't know why Roman needs so much dust. Why the White Fang is helping him. Who the fuck is this chick? Who are her friends? What are they up to? Why do they need Torchwick? What the hell is up with Penny? I still love that one. <laughs> no, and then, it's, and then they actually allow they go twice. I mean... What is Penny? <laughs> Seriously, what does that mean? Did, did, did you know on Penny's wiki page that she was classified as a human? <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. And, I'm, and I, I'm willing to just 
go out, go out on a limb and say bullshit. Yeah. It'd be some kind of cyborg fucking robot thing. I I, I, I still firmly believe she's she. As soon as I saw her weapon, I was going, "Yeah, this is getting a bit blaze blue for me." <laughs> What's going on with James Zucker? <laughs> I I just muted the video and just played I just played New Thirteen's theme over it, and I'm like, "Yep, it's definite similarity." Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rules of nature. <laughs> this but, is how swords work. <laughs> again, just um, just getting back to this. I mean, um. Just just sort of like talking about uh, Penny and that lot. It's more Penny and Velvet. Um, Because I've said other characters like Velvet are introduced but not really used for anything. And this this is kind of what I mean. Because it's like Velvet was introduced. We saw she was getting bullied. Then she just vanishes. Mm. That's it. Yeah, they, they didn't really do much with her. And it's like, oh, I would have liked to have seen a bit more. You don't introduce a character if you're just going to forget about them in a few episodes' time. Um, and with, with Penny, this was sort of a, a bit annoying for me. She's like, I love Penny. She's a badass. Penny! Penny! Yeah. Nora. Pen- <laughs> Penny is awesome. Yeah, she, but the problem is, one in episode fifteen, the scenes with her felt very out of place. Yeah, like it it just sort of ruined the what was, what was going on with Sun. Given, given she is supposed to be an awkward character, so perhaps that. Well, was yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, but it's just the fact that, again, you have to remember it's like, uh, when, Blake and Weiss are starting their their little argument. Yang just goes up to Ruby and says, uh, maybe we should get going. Then all of a sudden, Penny comes out of nowhere saying, where are we going? And then just vanishes. <laughs> uh, but no, like I said, I'm, I, I, I can put that just down to the character itself. Well, again, again, it's just, just the fact... I mean, it's not an excuse, but... I know, I know, but this sort of leads into the finale. It's like, even though it's awesome, Penny stole the show. Pretty much, yeah. She cut fucking hell. She went all riding on this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and and this, this is biggest, my biggest problem with Penny is the fact that she was introduced too soon. Mm. She and should she was, not have appeared in this in this volume. And she was, she was, you know, displayed too quick. Mm. Yeah. At the same time. Because, like I said, it's like the big finale, we expected... Team Ruby to, you know, be fighting against Roman. Pretty much. That's yeah. what it seemed to be building up to, but no. Yes, we had a little bit with Blake uh, fighting him and Sun, which was awesome. Oh, yeah, nunchuck guns. Fuck yeah. You. <laughs> I mean, so, I, had, I, had, I had no problem with Sun. Because, obviously, he was, the, he was the one who was getting... helping us learn more about Blake, so I have no getting problem Blake with Blake out of her theoretical shell. Yeah. So I have no problem with Sun, and him fighting alongside her for that bit, no problem. It worked. But my problem was when Penny was coming, because it just made it feel like as if Ruby was just the delivery girl for the episode. <laughs> just delivers Penny. Yeah, she just delivers... So you ordered, you ordered one Penny with a side of kick-ass, um, yeah. extra um, olive oil, and... Uh... <laughs> think, think about what Ruby does in that last episode. She just appears... Pulls out a scythe, Roman shoots her, and then Penny goes badass on him. Yeah, pretty much. So, Ruby had nothing really to contribute for the episode itself. She just delivered Penny. And then, obviously, Weiss and Yang delivered fuck all. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> this. Well, I, I, I will say, Weiss, her change of heart at the end of the episode pretty much just sold me there. Eh. She just shot up the power rankings on my, on my uh, favorite character, which we'll get to later. Yeah. But it, it, again, it's just one of me is like, really, this should have been um, all four members of Team Ruby, you know, head towards where this fight is going out. And Weiss should have had trouble at first thinking about should she be helping? Yeah. And obviously, then that's just sort of. Solves itself, and we would have had 
the first main victory of Team Ruby. Yay! But no, we had Penny coming in, doing it all herself. Because mm. again, while it got me interested in Penny, I would have gotten interested in Penny anyway in Volume 2. Yeah, this is my biggest problem with the series, the fact that it lacked focus. It seemed so much more interested in introducing new stuff and not really focusing on anything. Yep. Mm. So. Well, and just last a little bit, it asks more questions than it answers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So yeah, that that's my huge rant about volume one. All that's the my problems. Huge rant about oh. those four episodes. <laughs> oh god! Oh, four oh god! I I, th I think we were all pretty much thinking about dropping the series during those four episodes. I was so fucking close. Like, if episode 15 was still on John, I would just be like, no, I'm fucking done. They, <laughs> just, sh they I, I, should I, I have... Was, I was, like, done. I was, like, on the verge of done in episode 12. And I'm like, yeah, if, they was, show, if they show me that asshole card in Winchester again, I'm just gonna stop. Yeah. Uh, okay, we can all say Cart Winchester is the most hated character just now. Like, we can all agree oh, yeah. that he is the biggest dickhead in the whole show. Yeah. He puts the, he puts, he puts the Winchester name to fucking shame, if you get that reference. <laughs> <coughs> Supernatural. Honestly, honestly, you know, after Jean, Jean took out that Ursa, Jean should just slice Carter's head off. Fucking oath. <laughs> it would have made it more interesting. Yeah. Heel turn of the century. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing. Are we guessing favorite? Favorite character? No, uh, no, no, character. no, no, no. Soundtrack. You want to talk oh, about okay, soundtrack first? Soundtrack. The most consistently good thing about the show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, right. All right. And actually, I will say this. Um, b just before we actually started recording, um, I was really questioning whether or not to actually buy the soundtrack. Because uh, I was telling my dad about it, and. Just as we started recording, he actually came up to my room and said he had bought it for me. <laughs> oh my god. So I am actually holding the, I've I've got he's actually put it onto a onto a USB for me, so I'm actually holding it holding it right now. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> you better escape me that shit, will you? No! <laughs> If you, pirate. Yeah, if you want the soundtrack, you gotta buy it yourself. <laughs> you <pirate. laughs> Who's got the Logo Horizon opening? I'll pirate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, the, the soundtrack, right from the beginning, right from the start of the red trailer. Red Light Roses. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, red it, Light Roses for the fucking win. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just always been consistently good even though like we were saying with the trail bits the songs might have sometimes taken a bit of bit of a while to grow on us um yeah. I, I burn took a long time to grow me but now it's actually probably my favorite which is the funniest thing ever yeah. <laughs> like i don't like dubstep music but i love i burn and i think it's got something to do I, it's, it's not exactly it's, it's not dubstep it's more cool yeah it, it, I know, it, I mean, it, that's what i mean techno, I don't, I don't, it's Techno club house trance. Yeah. That's the thing with me, though. I'm not usually into that kind of like dance club type music. I'm more into the kind of rock type stuff, which is, I think it's to do with the way the lyrics flow, which is why I like it. Like just the way that it all seems to flow. Yeah. The, 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 yeah it's really just like sort of If you really like the rock stuff, you most likely like Red Light Roses Part 2. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking. So. <laughs> Oh, yes. I'm, try I'm, still I'm still trying to learn the lyrics for that song, and I'm like, bitch, slow down. <laughs> haven't, you, haven't you seen the video which has all the lyrics on it? I have. Linky I time! Think, the, 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 the funny part is, my friend actually gave me Red Light Roses Part 2, hasn't given me the album yet. Ah. Because oh, yeah. he's an asshole. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, so, um, so obviously with the trailers, we kind of knew the songs right there and then. Uh, so, 
what about um, the actual main main theme song of the series? Yeah, the, this the will thing, be the day. The thing, the thing with that is, is when I first heard it, I really liked it, but and by the end of the series, I got so sick of it. <laughs> Like, yeah, I kind of don't like it now. Like, yeah, it's probably uh, my most hated track. Like, I, I don't I, like it at all. I still like it, but I do agree. I I don't know what it is, because it's usually I love watching the openings on animes. It's, I can, yeah, it's the same here. It's yeah. so weird. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why, at the end of the series, I felt a bit burnt out with This Will Be The Day. Yeah, it's the same with me. Like, I just don't want to hear it now. Like, I really don't want to hear it. It's just, no. Uh. It's almost like, you know, you get that one song that everyone requests on the fucking radio, and you can't, like, because you're at school, you can't change the station because kids are dickheads like that, and they yeah. always play the same song, like, 50 fucking times, and you get annoyed. It's kind of like that feeling, but it's not as intense. <laughs> hmm. It's like a mini version of that. Yeah. It's odd. So, uh, let's speak about the other... Other... The other vocal songs, so we'll focus on them first. And um, then before before that, speaking of, most of these songs were done by Casey Lee Williams, right? Yep. I I think you you already know about this, Cardo, but I don't know about the rest of you. Did you know Casey Lee Williams is only fifteen years old? Yep. Oh snap! Good on him. Oh yeah. She she is she very talented. Best, she has the best vocal pitch I've ever heard yep. in a little girl like her. That's pretty good, yeah. I wouldn't have expected that. So yeah, props to Casey Lee. She's 15 years old and she's already doing this. She's got a bright future ahead of her. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> got an X Factor, that shit. <laughs> yeah, so obviously we had all, this, all the songs in the trailers. We had uh, This Will Be The Day. Uh, so what about Gold? Uh, this song was actually released... Um, I don't or they, 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 released, they released the full version early as thanks for the... 24 hour podcast that they that Rooster Teeth did which was amazing oh uh, yeah I said I actually sat through the whole pot, the Extra Life podcast the stream yeah. it was actually really good I I was I loved that um but yeah the I believe a bit of the song was also released it was, it was first shown on episode 2 the credits for episode 2 maybe I don't know I don't remember yeah. Um, for me, I mean, at first, I thought it was actually a song focused on Weiss. Not only because the credits, Gold. the credits, no, the credit um, image for episode two was an image of Weiss, and the song itself has a bit of a wintry Christmas feel to it. Mm. So I, because I didn't know what the song was called, so I thought it was a Weiss song. But no, it's a it's a Yang song, and it it did grow on me when I started listening to the full version. But I I don't know, it's, it's a bit of an odd one for me. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I may fall. Ooh, that's a good one. Mm. Isn't that the credits theme for the end of the series? No, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Um, Gold was the credits for credits for episode three. I may fall was the credits for episode two. That was ah, it. Okay. So I may fall. Do 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 do. Something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I remember. The fuck was that? <laughs> That was a motorcycle. Ignore it. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to use them by now, Mr. Like, at least it's not as bad as um, Dominic's fireworks. <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine trying to do the podcast that day? That yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, for... Um, yeah, and the main last last one was Wings. That was the credit sequence for the full uh, series. Okay. That was all right. I loved that song. I actually liked that song. Mm, I thought it was alright. Yeah, because it, it, it definitely does... It does fit the series, and, you know, because it is a very... It is obviously talking about Blake. Um, mm. So it does obviously sit, fit, and I do like do like how it's very... A very relaxed, very mellow song. Um, 
just sort of, it just sort of pulls back to that idea that Blake is meant to be kind of the lonely type. So lonely. <laughs> So, yeah, that is true. Yeah, because I mean, when they played just, just a little bit of the piano bit um, in episode fifteen, I was going, I love that song. I've got to have that that little bit of the soundtrack. That is going on my MP3 yeah, because I yeah, because at first I didn't think it was a vocal song. I just thought it was a bit of, bit of the actual OST. Mm. But um, yeah, it turned out to be the actual credit song. I was like, yes. <sighs> And I, I honestly do think Wings is actually my favourite song of the entire album. Yeah. It does say something, really, cause, considering how good the soundtrack as a whole is. Mm. You're so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, vocal songs for you guys, which one is your absolute favourite? I would probably have to... The, the thing is, is, I've got a soft spot for Red Light Roses. Like, I kind of do. But like I said, I Burn lately for me has just been really up there. But I think all time I'll just go with Red Like Roses because that's the one that's consistently the one I listen to the most, so. Uh, Damn. For, for me, it's a tie between Red Light Roses Part 2 and Mirror Mirror. No. Yeah, Mirror Mirror. I is pretty, that's, a, that's a close second for me. Close, I, I, close second. I, I just can't get the, that piano out of my head. Mm. That that middle part, that middle piano part is like, oh, oh musical, musical orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Dominic, do you have yeah. one? Well, I'll probably say Mirror Mirror and like Wings is my favourite at the moment. Yeah. And since I didn't really have, didn't say my second favourite. My second favourite is actually from Shadows. Yeah, from Chaz. Oh, now enjoy Naretsu and Sora's um, rendition. I, I honestly do want them to release, as much as I love the vocals, I want to see off vocal versions of all the songs. Oh, yeah. Just so people can have a bit of a karaoke night. Kar- karaoke party. The Otaku Blaze karaoke party, April Fool's. <laughs> 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 or, or or you know or you know they could get people to do covers like I've always imagined uh, Red Light Roses being sung by Marilyn Manson. <laughs> I mean, I mean he did a really good job with um, Sucker Punch's theme, which was what was it? What was it? Um, Sweet oh, Dreams, yeah. Sweet Dreams. Oh, yeah. He did a really good job. So yes. Yeah, um... Yeah, with the so that's with the focus like the actual, the actual uh, background music. Yeah, that kind of, for me, it was kind of there. Like I didn't really mind it too much. It yeah. wasn't bad, but I didn't really care too much. Yeah, I'll admit some, a lot of it didn't really. I suppose I really lo- like it when I actually listen to it. Um, during the series itself, I didn't notice it that much. Hmm. There were a few bits I liked. Um, oh, what, which, what was the uh, professor that was really energetic? Oh, that guy. Yeah. I don't remember his name. What was his name? Yeah, I, can't, I can't remember his name, but I do love uh, the bit of music that was playing for him. That's meant to be yeah, his theme. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Just a really energetic, really hyper. I love that bit. Um, yeah, it's like the rest of the rest of the actual soundtrack itself wasn't bad. It really did. Um, it definitely did work, and I definitely do hope. Well, I'm probably guessing they're going to be back for volume two in that lot. Oh yeah, they'll have to make a volume two. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah, as, as much as I love the background music, that's kind of what it was. It was background music. It was just kind of the it yeah. wasn't it, it filled the silence pretty much. Yeah. No, I, I do wish that um if they do it again that they don't release they don't release the background music in episodes. Like the entirety of episodes one background music is one song. Yeah, that would be quite 
Christmas. That, no, 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 that's quite annoying to me. Oh. That's how they've done it. To me, a piece of background music should be individual. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, the, yeah, little, yeah. the little bit that I did, like... I'm tired. I just kind of brain farted yeah. for a second. <laughs> yeah, the, the little bit, like I said, about the energetic professor, that should be its own little separate song. That should be his theme. Of course, of course you can always go into Audacity and support them up yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's more work for you, but, you know. Yeah, it's just that most most soundtracks and... Um, and that lot, they, they do separate it like that. So. Yeah, you do have to remember that. That would also cost more money, though. That's the thing, so... Well, not really. It would, again, just be the same. They would just be cutting it up. Yeah, but it's more work for them. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it'd be more. Fatigue. It's somehow more work when they're editing it to not to go ah just let it through instead of just go right cut there, cut there. Cut there, cut there. <laughs> stop, stop. No, you cut a bit too much. Yeah. Go back. Undo. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'll say this right now. At the time of this recording, um, the soundtrack is. Up on uh, on iTunes, and for us, it's currently third in the soundtrack charts. Yeah, it was at number one. Yeah, it was at number one somewhere. Not that high as I got was number two. It was behind Pokemon. I, I know no, what. Ricardo retweeted a image. And it was yeah, at one. Uh, at one point, it was actually number one in America. Pokemon's uh, getting up there though. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But I will say, now that, granted, yeah, I do now own the soundtrack, but I was so tempted to hold out for a physical copy. Oh, I don't know if they'd do that. No, oh, they, are, they, are, they are doing it. Oh, they are, they are now second. Yeah. Because, okay. I mean, just looking at the, the artwork for the CD cover, I was going, that would be so nice to have a physical copy of. I know that's that's kind of bit stupid, bit of a stupid reason for out a bit bit more money to well, ship it over. But you know, I always I would always prefer to get a CD over. Yeah, it's like it's I, still I just, like I'm one of the. I think it's because you and I were probably born in that generation when you know CDs and all that was still hip. Yeah. So it's kind of like we just kind of want to hold on to that for just a little bit longer. Yeah, it's, 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 it's always nice to have a physical thing that you can hold in exactly. your hand and I think and I actually worry about the next generation of human beings that aren't going to have that privilege yeah <laughs> but I, again at, at the time of this recording the soundtrack is actually um, been, been made available for a, a reduced price yeah so if you're going to so, get it get it <sighs> yeah so probably by the time a lot of people watch this podcast it'll have already gone up gone. Well, fuck, then don't, just don't listen to what I just said then. <laughs> it'll, probably, it'll probably be the same price as the physical copy. Probably, yeah. But yeah, the soundtrack as a whole, brilliant. Yeah, the most, like I said, the most consistently good thing yeah. about the show is, yeah. Okay, now we get to really... <laughs> we've, set our piece on, we've set our piece on the series, now we're going to look at the characters. Gonna, Which one's the favourite? Yeah, we're gonna we're going to look at our let's say top five favourite and least favourite characters. Okay. Uh, right. But also try and keep this short because I think we've gone we've been going off quite a fair bit now. We this is probably the longest chat about we've yeah. <laughs> Because of what we're gonna be doing next, oh god. Um <laughs> so let's say you can only really Try to keep it short, but you can only really go into detail about why you like your most favourite or most that least favourite. That sounds legitimate. Yeah. Uh, boy, I am so not going to like this then. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's start Who's with... Who's going to oh, go first? Start <laughs> with... Do, 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 with Sora. The weird... Ah. Oh, me. Sora. 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 <laughs> okay, um... Alright, my top five favorite characters. Let's see. Number five, Ruby Rose. Okay. Interesting. Um, number four, uh, Professor Port. <laughs> <laughs> he was God damn it. 
That goddamn mustache and Ryan Haywood. Okay. Um, it should it should have been Edgar in that cage. It should have been, but no. It should have been a demonic cow, but no. It was a demonic uh, pig. Uh, 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 number three would go to Penny. Yeah. Okay. Number three is Penny. Number two is Sun. Okay. Sun. Yeah. Yeah, because bloody Michael Jones. <laughs> yeah. Respect. <laughs> and number one is, you know, after the end of the series, I was thinking about it, who my new favorite character was. Why Schnee? Mm. Okay. It's, it, it's interesting, you see, because, you know, initially I didn't like her. Initially. Because she was a complete bitch. She acted like just about every single person, every single girl I met in school. <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. But you know, I know she's she's one of these people that will have a change of heart in as the series goes on, and mm-hmm. it happened. Yeah, it did. and Weiss and Weiss was actually nicer. Weiss kind of had a lightning moment. Mm-hmm. That's what I, that's what I'll compare her to. So, yeah, Weiss is my number one favorite character. Yeah. There you go. Okay, worst, what about least favorite? Uh, you want me to do top five least? Yeah. Okay. Bottom, uh, bottom five. Number five, Roman. Because we barely get to see him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number four, for some reason, Uvlek. The fucker was just fucking annoying, <laughs> even though he was just <laughs> for one episode. I've never seen anyone drink more coffee than Gorak. <laughs> That that's one thing. Um, unfortunately, this one has gone down the ranks because she's barely done anything. It's Yang. I can I can oh, understand she, it, really. She's down she's down there because she's barely done anything. Uh, number two, John Ark. Uh, for obvious reasons. Mm. And number one, let's all scream it out together, Cardin Winchester. <laughs> like I said, everyone, everyone, can we all agree now? That's the number one least favorite one. Can we just, can we just like have a consensus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just Cardin, all have a consensus. Cardin, Cardin just tries too hard. He's a the, faggot. <laughs> the, I don't know what the thought process was behind Cardin, but if you were trying to make a bully, that's not how bullies work. No, that's how dickheads yeah, work. Yeah, <laughs> Cardin, Cardin's just a douche. Yeah, yeah. It, even even then, I've seen bigger douchebags. Yeah. Me included. Okay. So, okay, anyways, that, that's all I have to say about that. Mm. So, I guess the torch falls on me then. Yep. Thing is, with me, it's going to be hard because I don't know if I can come up with five worst. Five, <laughs> I mean, I've got four people I can choose on the top five in, like, in order. I've got four, so I just need to add one more. So... I guess five, mostly because, uh, I guess I'll put Weiss at five, because out of the main, like, quadrio or whatever it's called, that's the least one that I liked. Yang fourth. <laughs> Surprisingly, Nora second. Because <laughs> fucking Nora. <laughs> um, no, and, then, uh, and, then, and then for me, which is something I, I think is probably noticeable from the beginning, is Blake first. And it's more or less, it's, it's something like, it's kind of like, there's something about Blake. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is, but I just like her as not only a character, but the design as well. And because I'm actually looking into going to character design, I look yeah. at these things. And I just, I find her design very attractive. So, yeah, I, I, I like, I like. I like Catwoman, I guess. <laughs> I could add that to my frickin' list of shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. That list just keeps getting bigger and even more days now, don't it? See, see, um, this, this this is why Narenzo and I shouldn't have met. He has a fetish list. I have a wife for this. <laughs> I have a fetish list. Oh, God, don't. Oh, God. <laughs> Two people who have lists. <laughs> one, uh. one's a little bit more disturbing than the other. <laughs> <laughs> but which one? Ooh. Uh, 
my god, Kato, we were just made for each other. <laughs> just fucking... just... Why did I introduce you two? <laughs> I can feel, I can, I can feel Carlos facepalm right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's great. We, we both feed off it. We're like animals. We just, ah, give us more, Kato, come on. <laughs> now the creatures are grim. <laughs> In, term, in terms of the least, I don't really, like, have a list for least, except for fucking Winchester. Like, he's the one character that stands out as the worst, so that's yeah. about it. Uh, oh, well, I guess it's me, then. Yep. I told you I'm not going to like this, because my list cannot, does not have that many if, in if, it. If you, can't, if, you can't, if you can't make top five, just... just uh, just say which one's your favourite and which one's your least. Well, so. well, well, I'll start with the least first because there's only two in that. <laughs> and that would be Carton and then Roman. Fuck Todd McGee. <laughs> hmm. And then for my favourites, it would have to go it would have to go Ruby, Blake, and then Weiss and for the first one, Nora! 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 <laughs> Everyone loves Nora. <laughs> okay. My turn. Um, do my best first. Um, number five is actually Ren. Uh, four is Yang. Three is Sun. Two is Nora! Nora! Nora. <laughs> you can't not join it. Yep. <laughs> and... Number one for me has to be Blake. Um, again, I, I think it There's is... something about Blake. Yeah. <laughs> I think, really... I mean, firstly, just her design, I absolutely loved. Yeah, um, I for me, it's mainly her eyes. Her eyes are fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, it's kind of cat eye, but it's not full cat eye. It's really cool. Yeah. Like, it's sort of like a half cat half normal human hybrid yeah, for, me, for me again it, pulling into that whole cat like bit to it it's how bright they are yeah they're like that they really yellow, for me her color. eyes just instantly catch you they are the yeah, first thing you will look at and even more so than ruby silver eyes actually yeah mm. and really because um cause it was actually just a little bit in the last episode really it's just a little bit where she's just looking out over the um, over the harbour like in hiding and her eyes are much bigger than usual yeah. and I just felt like re she's really paying attention but at the same time I was going aww, <laughs> aww. I couldn't help it <laughs> but, but yeah I, I, but, but she's snarky as fuck she is <laughs> it's like I just I just and again really Blake was the best developed for me, yeah. that's a good character. That's what pulls me in. The fact that she is this silent type, but mm -hmm. we learnt why she's this silent type. Yeah, we did. It was quite interesting, too. Yeah. I of thought, course, I called the whole fucking Varnus thing. I <laughs> called it. I called it. Uh, I knew she'd be a cat woman. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Yeah. <laughs> my, sister, my, goes to battle with the, my, sister, one who goes to battle in a dress. <laughs> It's a combat skirt. <laughs> yeah. Skirt. Sunglasses deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a combat skirt. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Yeah, but yeah. So. But yeah, just Blake overall. Just brilliant character. Mm, great. Now for my least favourite. Ooh. <laughs> Winchester. Yeah. Winchester. At number five, I have to actually say Ruby. Now you see, this is, this, yeah, this, this is what I'm... Like, if it was going from all the characters in order, sixth would be Ruby for me. So yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, number four, Roman. Mm. Number three, Weiss. Mm. Uh... Number two, Jean. And of course, number one, Cardin. Winchester. Cardin Winchester. Fucking Winchester. <sighs> I, 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 on, 
Honestly, as a whole, I do not care at all for Team Cardinal. I do we not... We didn't even get any, but, like, for that fucking shit. We don't... Yeah, no one cares. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want them to appear in any major appearance again. Granted, yeah, you, can, you can, you can, yeah, you can, was it just, like, it's what? just a mace, it seemed. Yeah, you can, yeah. you can have them in the fight scenes, like, in the background, but I don't want them being pulled into the focus. No, not at all. Yeah, that, that's, that's what says the thing. If I'm more interested in, say, Velvet, then, yeah. then I am with Team Cardinal. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, so those are most most and least favourite characters. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a long one. Yep. Oh, I need, need a drink. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> to me it's a long morning. Hello. Oh yeah, god. Well, true, true, it is morning to me as well, so yeah, that's true. This podcast <laughs> is in two hours long. Well, it's the Ruby podcast. What do you expect? <laughs> oh, boy. If this was the we're probably, we're, podcast, it yeah, we're, one, two hours long. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're probably going to double that with Kill the Kill when that's finished. Yeah. Yes, fuck. <laughs> Speaking of which, I haven't watched episode seven yet. No spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. Just yes. yes, letting you know. Oh, that, actually, I that, haven't watched it yet. that was something I was going to bring up by... We forgot about. Ah uh, yes, yes, you you were gonna do that. Yeah, yeah I I mentioned last. this I mentioned this last week when we were waiting for Sora, but um, I kind of thought that um, episode six of Kill a Kill was how the Jean episodes should have been handled. Yeah. Fuck yes. Because in in Kill a Kill episode six, they focus. Much more on the villains. Specifically, yeah. this one guy. Yeah, <laughs> specifically one of one of the villains. But at the same time, our main character still learned something. And was still a vital part of the episode. Yes. In fact, I think you stated this last week. Is that it? It was actually portrayed more as if she was the villain, yeah, rather than the actual villains, which was really interesting for me. That was a really good episode. Yeah, that is how the genre episodes should have been handled. Yeah, they, I completely agree. They had a focus on another character who wasn't our main, but at the same time, our main still learnt something from it. And we got to learn pretty much a shit ton about this guy and who he is and what his personality is and his history and everything yeah. about him. Grant All in one nice, finely wrapped package. Yeah. I mean, granted, yeah, in the genre episode, we learned that he sort of cre creeped into the school. Well, not like we give a shit. <laughs> um... Considering the fact I'm pretty sure that what's-his-name headmaster already knows this. Yeah. Like, there's no way. There's no way. That you could sneak into Beacon and not have like, come on, let's let's be honest here. Like, come on, he didn't, you know. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I I will be happy if this if the plot points of him creeping into the school is brought up again, but with a bit more less blackmail. An, yeah, a bit <laughs> no, a bit more with an effect. Yeah. It had it really that story. It should have been the teachers find out. Yeah. That he creeps into the school. That is when it should have been revealed. Not as blackmail for bullying. Yeah, it was just that. was that Because that is not cool. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just remind because we've got these... God, we, you know, we can bitch about those four episodes to the till morning. Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, but here's, but here's, but here's the thing. That, that whole part just reminded me because we've got this guy called Kim.com in New Zealand who's this Swedish guy who's like a millionaire who's trying to get us all fast internet and he did an internet ad and basically he was talking about how the internet service providers do capping and he was like, <clears throat> it's called capping and it's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, I just, and I'm just like, it's called blackmail. And it's not cool. <laughs> Just... Oh, okay. Okay, now... Oh, this is going to be a big one. Time to, to discuss 
what we would change for volume two. Those four episodes! <laughs> Get rid of them! <laughs> yeah, recon those episodes. Recon those episodes completely. We don't need them. <laughs> I don't know. The thing with the six is we've kind of already done this already. For the kind of. But, I mean, so, I mean, really, what what would we have the, the focus on? What would we want I, I, in I Volume want, 2? Fo- well, for a start, Yang. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for yeah, a start. We all, at, we all at, agree, Yang. At, so, at, well, least, really, at least three or four episodes on here. Really, we should, we, should, we should really bring up, like, what do we think Volume 2 is going to be already? I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be, because they didn't focus on Yang, Yang. We're going to figure out who the fuck these villains are and what their significance is in terms of this, like, world. I'm thinking... We all, we all, know, we all, sure. know, the, we all know the tournament's going to happen. Yeah. The tournament's going to have to happen. And I, I'm going to bet Jeff and Gavin are going to be the commentators. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> if they are, oh, yes. They bought the bromance pack. <laughs> that, bromance. Yeah, if, if, if we could have anything in Volume 2, for the tournament at least, it's got to be mm-hmm. Jeff and Gavin doing the commentary. For the tournament, and, and, it's gotta be. And, and Ray as a and Ray as a field side reporter. <laughs> oh yes! <laughs> oh my god! That would be the yeah. I'm trying to think actually, like what would possibly be outcomes. Um, I I honestly think, if anything, it could be, we the tournament starts. And during it, Yang finds the person she was looking for. Possibly, yes. Maybe and, that, and also, really, also, I think. Also the well, really, I think I think that's I think honestly that's going to be all they do. Yeah, or possibly but, during the um, during the um, tournament, a terrorist attack from what's his face. I get the feeling that would actually be what, how they end volume two. Yeah, and that's what I'm predicting too. It'll be a terrorist attack of some sort. Because, I mean, why the fuck does it need that much dust? <laughs> I mean, seriously now, all of that dust. All of it. Yeah. Uh, honestly, what I want to see is a rematch between Yang and Melanie. Mm. That fight was awesome during the yellow trailer. Don't get me wrong. It, it, yeah. I know it was a two-on-one handicap match, but the bloody fight was fucking awesome. Yep. It was pretty cool. Perhaps they will come back for the tournament. We don't really... No, they better. They better. They better. <laughs> well, I'll fl- I'll, I'll, I know where they, I know where they are. I have their address. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fly to Austin. Fly all the way to Austin just to say, look, guys, I like what you're doing. But add them to the tournament. Add them yeah. in. Add them in volume two. How? And then um, I and then I just give them a big bag of money and then. Leave. Just give a big bag. Just leave. And then boom, leave. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do just think it's going to be more focused on the tournament. Though, honestly, considering how quickly the tournament was brought up in in volume one. Yeah, it was kind of like a sort of thing that just happened. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I get the feeling that. If anything, they could still be on the build-up to the tournament. Yeah, maybe. We'll, we'll have to see. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, because I, I... At best, it'll be the tournament kicks off and Yang gets a bit more focus. At the worst, mm-hmm. it's going to be they're further building up to the tournament and they just keep on introducing more and more characters. Possibly, yes. Just to include, just to include the entire... Just to put the entire state office to, you know, be in. Yeah. That's the thing. Also, what I want to see is how they're going to handle Team Juniper for this tournament. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think I, I, I would like a bit of focus. I would like a bit of focus on Nora and Nora's friends. What's his name? I don't remember Red. his name. Is. Red. Yeah. Like, like some focus on those two and their history and what's going on there. That would be nice. Also, that, that also, also, they haven't mentioned how the tournament was going to be. Is it going to be group fights, one-on-one fights? Yeah, no, I'm not really sure. 
are they gonna do the Tales of Arena style? Hmm. Or like something like that? We we still have to figure this out. Yeah. We have to wait one too. Yeah, but we also have to remember this is this is Monty we're talking about. Yeah. The king <laughs> of overcomplicating things. Yep. <laughs> that tournament could be mind blowing to us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It, it can go two ways. It's either the most mind blowing thing or it's gonna be an animation nightmare. <laughs> mm. Considering he did Dead Fantasy. Yeah. I mm. why do I get the feeling that at the same time, they're actually going to be sort of avoiding showing us the fights. Like, a lot of the fights are going to happen off-screen. To fill in for backstory. Yeah. And to fill in for, pro like, the price of doing the, like, fights and whatnot. <coughs> yeah. So, I, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if... Um, I mean, surely we've got to have a, a Ruby versus Juniper fight. That would be pretty cool. I don't care of course, if... Of course Nora would just win, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they don't have to have it as the final match, because I think, if anything, that would be way too cliché. That would be incredibly cliché. It's way too obvious. Sem maybe semi-final or something. Yeah. yeah. Or they could have just a leader versus leader fight. Maybe. Yeah. Because I think, if anything, I'd want to see... Actually, I'd want to see um, Velvet have her own team going up against Team Cardinal and winning. That would be nice. And the entire g the entire team is... Um, fit. Oh, God, I forgot. Yeah, Barnas. Barnas, thank you. I'm too tired today. Um, yeah, and the entire team is just Barnas. It just completely wipes the floor of his yeah. team. Just that, destroys them. That would make me feel better. That would make me feel a whole lot better. Plus, it would, be for, it would be further beating up on Team Cardinal, which is always a good thing. Yeah, the more, the, 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 the more sissy boy fucking Winchester gets his ass kicked, the better. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see Juniper versus Ruby. Um, see, I get the feeling that either one, that fight will be the, be the final, mm. which, again, I think is cliche, or two... They'll begin the fight at some point, but it'll be interrupted by Roman and the others. Yeah, something like that. Yep. It's it'll, gonna, be all, it'll, it'll be all like, you know, if you if you know Flame of Wrecker, it'll be like one-on-one -on -one fights, and like, in the background, some shit's happening. Yeah, yeah probably. Basically, so, what, yeah. basically what, I don't want, what I don't want from this tournament <coughs> is... Um, like I said, the final fight being Ruby versus Juniper, because yeah, could, we could all kind of guess that would ha that would happen. Mm. Um, and two, I don't want to see Team Cardinal getting far in the tournament. No, no, no they they need to go like the first fucking. Yeah, like, they need to just bleh, just disappear off the face. He needs to just disappear off the face of the earth and just never fucking return. Yeah, mm. and. Yeah, oh, I had a third point, I've forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, we're all getting tired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, also, you know what, what else? That, uh, this just came up to me. You know what else I want to see? What? Austin kick ass. That is true. If Torchwick comes in, and, if Torchwick comes in, Austin gets, just goes up there yeah, I, and just I, kicks I, ass. I do want to see more of the teachers doing stuff. Oh, yeah. All while holding a cup of coffee. Yep. Oh yeah, he's just he's just got a cup of coffee. No, he throws the cup of coffee into the ear, <laughs> kicks some serious ass, and then catches the cup and then collects the like just like, gets all of the coffee and just like one flipping like motion. Like, that'd be amazing. <laughs> and, just, then, and then and then the celebratory sip. <sighs> yeah, he just and then just sips. He's like mm, mocha. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> that great. that would be awesome. Just to see the teachers getting involved. Yeah. Because yeah. again, it, again, really, considering the final fight is the teachers. <laughs> yes. There you go. Bo the bonus fight: teachers versus the champions. Well, considering the fact that we have actually been introduced to four teachers. Yeah. They True. could make a team. Because 
really Team kick ass here. Because <laughs> <laughs> if anything, even though the characters are meant to be at school, we didn't really see a lot of the focus on the school. Uniforms! <laughs> which they rarely wore. I'm just like, I think they realised that was a stupid idea. <laughs> just kind of like, nope. Yeah, cause, again, just think about, think about this. Because um, there was that little bit where, again, when they're talking to Jean about him being bullied and everything, they're all in the regular clothes, yet everybody else is in their uh, uniforms. Yeah, I'm just kind of going, what? We'll break his legs. <laughs> we'll break his legs. <laughs> They should, have just, they should have had like an after bit where when she's just walking out of the forest and then Nora's just behind a tree with the scariest look in the history of humanity just looking at him. It's just like, I think, if anything, yeah, if anything, I don't want a whole series focused on Nora. No. I, want, I want a DVD, Blu-ray, extra episode <laughs> for each volume. Day in the life of Nora. Yeah, each volume. Focuses on Nora. A bonus yeah, episode no, focused on Nora for each volume. Not a single shit. <laughs> My day starts with me getting up in the morning not giving a single shit. <laughs> <laughs> then I go down for breakfast. Yay, pancakes! Yay! <laughs> I finally give a shit. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I'd love to see that. Just Nora is... <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it is pretty amazing how quickly we got all attached to Nora. <laughs> She's the most likable character in the whole series. Like, jeez, if I didn't like Blake so much, she'd be number one. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. It's like, it's like, I swear she, like, stole Yang's energy. Damn straight. <laughs> she stole, she, no, she didn't just steal Yang's energy, she stole the whole cast. See, she yeah. <laughs> just condensed it all into one perfect being. Yeah, because, I mean, I'll admit, when Nora first appeared, I did find her a bit annoying. But then she just grows on you. Yeah, it's, like, like... it's like, first, because I mean, when she did the boop bit, I went, God, okay, right. that was adorable. Yeah, that was just adorable as fuck. That was kawaii but, desu as yeah, fuck. Yeah, but when, <laughs> I think the bit which got to me the most was again in episode 8, when she first comes flying in with the with the kuma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah -hoo! Oh, I think I broke it. <laughs> I, I've, no, it was it was a bit where she's going. I'm queen of the castle. I'm queen of the castle, and you just hear Ren go, <laughs> Nora. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bit. She's amazing. I cannot love Nora. Nora's Nora's great. Love Nora. Nora. No, oh my god! I need to have a t-shirt which is just Nora for life. <laughs> <laughs> Nora for life. <laughs> They, 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 they need, you know, they need to make a source uh, workshop for TF2. No, I know <laughs> what t shirt I, I know what t shirt they need. Stay calm and call Nora. <laughs> yes! yes. <laughs> 0800 Nora hotline. <laughs> <laughs> Have a the situation call calls for a whole lot more Nora. <laughs> call 1 800 Valkyrie. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think I think Nora has easily taken taken over considering she's the only other member apart from the main four to have her own t-shirt. Oh yeah. So like Team Cardinal, I mean Team Juniper have like their logo t-shirt, but yeah. Nora has her own. She's that oh, awesome. She's she, she's in her own league. She she could be her own team. Just team Team Nora. Just you know <laughs> Team Nora. She can wield four weapons at once and just be a team Nora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so I, th I think that's really all we can think about for the volume two. Um, there was... Yeah, oh God, there was actually one little bit which I forgot to talk about. Something that I thought would have been nice for them to do. Um, and it's... This kind of goes back to those two Weiss episodes. Mm. Because honestly, like I said, I didn't think those were the best. Mm. Um, 
for me, I, I, I actually thought really they should have been. Um, we see them in different classes. Ah, I see. So it's like, yes, at the beginning, Weiss is questioning Ruby as the leader. Mm. Um, but really, it should have been like, okay, they have like the general, the general class where Ruby falls asleep, and Weiss yeah. questions, is she meant to be our leader? Not, not getting angry and freaking out like she did, just. Getting just questioning the decision, just getting confused by it. Um, but then actually going into like possibly some sort of uh, woodwork joinery class, yeah, and seeing Ruby make a weapon from scratch. Oh, wow! Because they they said that Ruby made her own weapon, yeah, and that she loves weapons like that. So seeing her in a you know, building a weapon from scratch would have been, you know, go, okay, she's a lot better here. Mm. She's good here. And then maybe having the two having a quick fight using their weapons that they've been making in class. Yeah, that would be interesting. And just Ruby completely winning. Mm. Just to, for, and then maybe Weiss could have run off, really confused, had a quick talk with the teacher, then come back and just mm. said, okay, I'm going to try and be a better teammate. Yeah, that, that's, that, that would have been nice. Yeah, I feel like that would have worked better. And would have, again, it would have had a bit more character development for Ruby as well. Mm, yes. showing, showing that she loves to make weapons instead of just telling us it. Because mm. that, was, that was actually something that the series did. It told instead of showed. Which is a big, 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 big no-no. Yeah. Grant, yeah, granted, again, obviously they only had a limited amount of time. They had to get through a lot of stuff. But still, if it was written better, or differently, really, they could have put it in. They have more time to plan this stuff. Well, mm. apparently, the, the, at least in the Ruby podcast, they said that it's been planning it for about one or two years. I don't know. <laughs> I go, whoa. One or two years, and this is the first series. Uh, needs, needs more planning. If needs more rules of nature. Yeah. If obviously we all this is obviously just based on volume one. If volume two blows our minds, <laughs> it very well could. Oh yeah. Then yeah, more power to it. So, finally. Ratings for Ruby Volume One. Uh, Obviously, if you are not familiar with our rating system from our season reviews, we we have a. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be putting this on our rating charts. Oh no, it's not. But um, we have a system of either dropped, bin, stream, buy. Or must see. These are our ratings. Mm -hmm. So, um, who wants to give their final thoughts first? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, okay. Final thoughts. It was a good attempt. <laughs> um, you did good. You made some likable characters. Um, your character design is good. Keep them on board. Um, <laughs> Uh, story needs a little bit of work, but I reckon if you kind of spent a bit of time reworking your um, scripts a little bit before each episode, you know, maybe do a little bit... If you worked a little bit better into it, it might come out a bit better in the long run. Um, oh, what else? All up, I think it was a very... It was, it's not as bad as some people say it is, yeah. but I think that as long as you skip the four episodes, you'll be fine. I'll give this one a definite... I'm not going to give it a must-watch, but I reckon it's it's a worth a shot. If, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. It's so, worth a stream. Yeah, a stream. It's worth a stream. At, at, at the least, it's worth a stream. Yeah. Okay. All right, I guess I'm next. Okay. All right, so this volume of this volume of Ruby. Um, good try, Monty, but no. <coughs> Just no. Um... 
you try something like an anime, you got a team to watch a bunch of anime and try to get inspiration. Hell, you're currently researching Avatar now. Oh, God. I don't know. Yeah. Please don't be Korra. Please. Oh, fuck. No, it's, no, it's, not, it's, no, it's Last Airbender. Don't worry. Ah, oh, good, good, good. <laughs> um, but, yeah, honestly, I was hyped for it, like, for a few episodes. Then came the four episodes. Then came... Yeah, it's just it's just all over the place. I, I I don't I can't actually give this a rating because it's just it's conflicted opinions and the stock market. But uh, <laughs> the rules the rules of nature, Sora. You have to the put rules that into of account too. The rules of nature. But I said, you know, if you'd like it, like me, I like it, and I sort of don't like it. I give this a borderline buy to high stream. If you really don't like it, then that's your problem. So, yeah. High stream for me. Okay. Well, for me, I have to... Um, most of the points have already been explained by Nuretsu, so for this, I'd probably give it a stream. Okay. Um, for me, yeah, I mean, kind of what you guys were saying, I was really excited for the series. Um... I did feel a bit disappointed finding out it was going to be set in a school. But I, I did... I liked a lot of the setup. I liked a lot of the characters. Um, but for me... It wasn't really a problem as far with the story itself. It's more with the way it was released. Mm. Because, like I said, it worked a lot better when it was marathon. When you just instantly jump from one episode to the next. Um, having to wait a full week just for about two minutes of footage is not on. So it was it was on, it was only natural that people would start complaining about it. Um, so that's why I said it would be better to be released daily. Um, but I, I, in terms of the animation, I can't really fault it so much because I know how hard it would it's going to be to do that sort of stuff. Granted, I wish I could work with them for it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I it still inspired me to uh, like keep working on my own stuff. Um, but to keep, you know, to learn more about 3D animation. Um, to try and get my own stories finished. Um... And to really just keep going, but um, even even with all my feelings about it, I still admit that after episode eight, the series took a even deeper nosedive to me. Um, the Weiss episodes weren't handled the best to me. It felt a bit; those felt a bit rushed. Um, the and of course the Jean episodes were absolutely awful. Um, again, but it pulled it back for the series finale. Um, but again, I just felt like the series was all over the place. It had no focus. Um, instead of instead of just this being Ruby's journey to find friends, to find a team, and working together it just became a random mishmash of adventures if you can even call them that yeah pretty much um and again when i was even though i said the series is best marathon the main reason i hate those four genre episodes is because even when you marathon it they don't work they don't feel no, natural not. They could have easily been put anywhere and it would have worked a lot better. Um, and I will admit that during those four episodes, I seriously wanted to drop the series. Um, I put it as a bin on my rating list. I had just had enough. I came back for the series for now and I was so happy for those last two episodes. So... Yeah, I had a lot of mixed feelings, so I have to give it a stream. Because 
it's so easy to watch online. You can find it anywhere. So if you like it, you like it, and you'll probably end up buying it. If you don't like it, there you go. Simple. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's a very subjectional thing. It's gonna be a matter of personal preference. Yeah, granted, yeah, I'm still gonna be fully fully supporting the series. All right, like I said, I've got, oh, I've now got the soundtrack. I'm gonna be trying my best to get some money up for like some of the t-shirts and of course the Blu-ray. Mm. But granted, yeah, still saying that I have to give it a stream. So all up, it's pretty much a stream then. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh, God. The longest chat about yet. Fine. Yeah, God <laughs> damn it. But yeah, I like, I like doing so, these chat about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, chat abouts are awesome. We need to do more of these. What should we do the next one? <laughs> Probably we will. Need to come up with no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll be kill or kill because obviously we'll be doing that in season no, two. No. Yeah. yeah, no. Maybe, some, maybe something gaming related. Something gaming related, maybe. I was thinking about about doing a chat about for like JRPGs, just That'd in general. Be but what you've played? Actually, speaking of that, after the thing, I can talk about one of those. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. So hopefully we don't have tons of tons of angry messages below us. But knowing our well, look, and <laughs> yeah, knowing our look, nobody will even pay attention to this video. <laughs> yeah, that one guy. guy. Yeah, that one that guy. One guy. Dear, dear blood DXD, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Unless yeah. someone decides to tweet this podcast to Monty. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, we're dead. We're dead. We're going to have the entire Rooster Teeth community after us. The, the entire Rooster Teeth community. Even though, we've, even though we've, been tried, we've tried our best to be as kind as we can. <laughs> we, we've been actually pretty kind, considering what other people say about this. Yes. Like, let's be it's honest. Tired. Entire Rusty community on our asses. Yeah. Yep. Honestly, I've been tempted to actually put this on on my account on the Rusty website. We should. We I'm need Ricardo, We need more drawing. Okay. You might not be <laughs> oh, Any publicity okay. is good publicity. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we're gonna end this here before we get lynched. Uh, yep. <laughs> so yeah, this has been Carter in nineteen eighty nine with Dominic Noretsu and Sora. Hope maybe if you if you actually liked what we said, not bloody likely, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then maybe stick you know subscribe, see if, see what other videos we come up with. Most of our content is um, anime related. However, we do have some gaming related stuff for those people who like that as well. Yeah. There, yeah, so we we will see you possibly for another chat about all just the regular podcasts that we do. Anyway. See you later. Until next month. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop.